Good day, everybody. I hope you're having a great Thursday. Um, <clears throat> it's great to see you in chat. Oliver first. Yes. Linda, good morning. Vikram, hello. It is a very interesting day today. Um, I hope we're going to have a lot of fun. Mr. Booth, hello. Okay, just checking out everything. We look like we're good. Stuart, hello. Uh, roll up, roll up for Kozel's Crazy Creative Circus. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit today, Oliver, but I don't think we're going to do it. Um, I don't think I'm going to be working on that today. But uh, yes, Mafu, hello. Hello, Kozel Nation. How dare little Sean haunt the real Sean? <laughs> that is true, Mafu. That's true. Um, let's go ahead and take care of introductions really fast and switching screens. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Kozel. I'm a photographer. I'm based in Germany. If you're watching this on Behance, you can up above my head up there, you will see my icon in which you can click on it and it'll take you to my Behance page. Uh, Vikram, hello. Manasani, 1999. Hello on Twitch. Vikram is on YouTube. Great to see you both. Welcome in. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube or Twitch, you will find a link tree right here uh, in my profile. If you click on my link tree, it will take you to every place where I am on the interwebs. Um, and we will be talking about my Discord in a little bit. So down at the bottom, you can join my Discord from there. But back over onto Behance, and you can actually join Behance from here. And I tell you, the Behance chat is way more active uh, because there's way more people watching on Behance. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm keen out. Hold. That made it even worse. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Vikram says, <clears throat> I am Vikram here, Sean. So it's Vikram on Twitch and YouTube. Hello, Vikram. <laughs> okay, all, all of the, your guys' different names really mess me up. But, <clears throat> over on Behance, uh, if you don't want to go to my link tree, if you scroll down, you will see I have all the links down below, all the important links. And if you scroll up, you can check out my past streams, not under subscriber, but if you want to subscribe, if you like what I do, feel free. Vikram saying I'm watching whole three. I think he means all three. That's funny. Uh, but you can check out my past live streams right there. And I've got some fun news, maybe? about live streams I don't know if I can actually share this or not but <clears throat> next month I am going to be um, doing a Adobe Express stream on Andrew Kavanaugh's Facebook group his photography Facebook and also in a couple months, I am actually being scheduled for Adobe Live US stream. So, um, I, that, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, when there's more details to be passed along, I will definitely pass it along. But I know in relationship to my streams, um, <laughs> Sandrine says, Road to Worldwide Fame. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I know that it is a little bit later in the day than most for most of you. It's uh, I think it's going to be the 7.30 slot for me, so 6.30 for the UK, which I know it's, it's 
kind of late for some of you. Um, so I'm going to stay here. Okay, Oliver says, oh, cool. That means I don't have to recommend you as a guest, which is good because the form confused me. Really? Oh, we all need party for that, Sean? Vikram, yes. Going to play in the big playground, Linda says. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, Maku's asking, who's your Adobe Live host? I don't know yet. That information has not been passed along to me. And um, now the interesting thing, okay, I, you know what? I, I can't tell you too much, so I'm not going to. More information will be coming when I have it, but I am extremely excited um, when I got the email. I think I did one of these things right here. Wait for it, baby. Wake up. There we go. Sean breaks America. More merch needed. <clears throat> We're going to have to order more ruffs. More goats and ruffs. All right. So scrolling down, you can check out. Now, I don't know if this is still not working for you. Um, it's working for me, so I apologize profusely. I don't know what's going on. Behance has a bu bug. Uh, <laughs> more baubles needed in ex Express Live. I, I will not be doing an, an Express. I'll be doing Express on the YouTube. Um, no, excuse me, on the Facebook. I'll be doing Express. But uh, they are bringing me in to do photography. So I will be working in Photoshop and Lightroom Classic just like today. Okay. So anyway, I think that's enough about me. That's enough about me. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm getting a lot of... We should see if we can get Jeff Yas as your host. I don't think I could get a word in edgewise. Jeff was on fire. Um, I think a crocheted little Sean mascot would be something available. Not by me, though. <laughs> Anki, hello. Sh oh, okay. Anki saying hello to Shannon. I th thought that was me, but welcome in, Anki. Good to see you. Something to be commissioned. <sighs> All right. Let's, let's get into the little Sean. Let's, let's do it. Uh, if you're on my Behance... <sighs> If you're on my Behance, you can join my Discord from here. If you are on my Linktree, like I said earlier, you can scroll down and join my Discord from there. Jumping over into the Discord, um, we've got a couple things to talk about. And yeah, let's just jump right into the Creative Circus. So technically, this hasn't started yet. But th that's not a problem because there's no start date. There's no end date. Um, the last stream when I started making this, <clears throat> it was it, it was the brainstorm. So letting you know about it, let you think about it if, if you want to join this community challenge. So as you can see, it says, welcome to the 2023 Community Challenge Creative Circus. Please use whatever app you would like to create your circus-themed circus artwork, or it could be traditional. You can do traditional too. There's no rules, just circus-themed. Use the below hashtag when posting to your socials and post the Creative Circus and post to the Creative Circus feed on my Discord so I can show off your work on my live streams. Have fun with the briefs below, and I can't wait to see what you make. Hi, Jack! <laughs> that is some fancy, fancy text there. Ooh, coming in good. Wow. Ah, too many people. There we go. Oh... Uh, Mafu is saying, did I mess up? Does that mean my entry wasn't accepted? No, Mafu, it's accepted. It's accepted. 
as I said, there's, you know, I really don't make a ton of rules for these challenges. So, um, really quickly, it was pointed out to me that I, let me see if I can find it really quick, but I did spell balloons wrong. Balloons. So, I don't know what balloons are, but it's supposed to be balloons. Um, oops. <clears throat> so, this, these are just a brief, whoa, Oliver. Oliver's coming in with the hijack too. Uh, these, these are just suggestions. If you have any problems thinking of something to make, this is to help inspire you. So I've got that going. Oh, you know what I want to do? Just playing around. And I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to jump into express, but talking about it, um, All I did is playing around watching the live streams yesterday. I wanted just, just to have some fun. So I was able to find all of these shapes from the noun project. Um, I was just throwing them on there, checking it out. And so it's pretty amazing. You know, we've got the stilts. Um, I love the unicorn tight rope or high wire act. We even found the knife throwers. Couldn't believe that. Um, I dug the, the, uh, the zebra and the fire juggler. I mean, I did not expect these. We've got the uh, trained dogs. We've got the audience or the crowd sitting in the bleachers. Um, the poo cleaner. So I completely did not expect to find all of these from Adobe Express, uh, and the noun project. But I did. I was I I was laughing. I was just having fun. Gareth, hello. So just having fun with it. And I may take this in and use these shapes to create a new intro scene for the um for the backdrop, for the intro, for the challenge. I don't know. Thinking about it. Uh, but I just wanted to show everybody that really quick. And I tell you what, I am speaking of Express. I am having an extremely difficult time coming up with a topic for this stream in a couple weeks. I hope Andrew doesn't see this. I don't know if he watches my streams, but... Ooh, oh wait, cleaners play an act in circuses. This is perfect for me. Oh, Mafu it is. It is. And they do. Uh, we've got right here, cleaners. And usually it's part of, they make it kind of part of the clowns um, doing the cleaning, something like that. I have a lot of photos from circus shows. Cool. Uh, it will come to you when you least expect it. I know, Jack. I think I've got my Adobe Live figured out. But as for the... Oh, Jack wasn't here. I, I let it slip. No deets, no details yet. You could make a circus flyers and tickets in Express. I was thinking about that, Oliver. But I don't know if I wanted to do the creative circus. So, <clears throat> okay. So this is uh, on the up above my head at the creative circus feed under challenges. This is where you're going to post your work and I'm going to take a look at it and show it off. Um, we need a picture of you as the ringmaster now. Oh, that's okay, <clears throat> Oliver. Hold on, everybody. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch, I think yes, animal crackers. Oh, uh, I, I don't know if it's Terry White's. No. Let me. I'm. I'm. 
trying to find something really quick. Nope, that's not it. Maybe it's under capture. Let me get back in here. Ooh, gosh, you're giving me a good idea. Good idea. Um, you need a red jacket, gold waistcoat. I hope it's this one. I hope. Where are you? Where are you? Come on, come on. You think I would recognize my own... Ah, oh, this is it. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Me as ringmaster. All right, so this was a daily creative challenge with Voodoo Val quite a while ago. Um... 2020, February 4th, 2020. So quite a while ago. And uh, the whole thing was uh, space oriented. And so the very first thing that I did is I'm like, I gotta be an astronaut. And this is so funny because I remember um, when Voodoo Val was going through the Discord looking at it, she was so surprised by this photo. She's like, now, um, I think she confused me with Tony Harmer because she asked, asked if I was actually an astronaut. So I, I took that as a pretty big compliment. So doing me as a ringmaster, it's a possibility. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, also, just so you know, the original photo is done by NASA. You can get the free photos from NASA's website. Uh, Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, Gareth says, have a huge grin on my face. Shiny new toy has arrived. And we're trying to figure out. Um, I've been thinking of getting a screen cap so I could push his head on a strong man. Oh, okay. I got you. That's funny. Oh, Gareth got a 12.90 inch iPad Pro M2 chip, one terabyte of storage to get the 16 gigabyte of RAM. Nice. Jack says, NASA has a crazy amount of cool public domain photos if you're ever looking for cool textures. I did not think of using those for textures. Great tip, Jack. Um... Oliver says, I was thinking the same. You started a competition with Tony for past jobs. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Ringmaster? Possibility. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that idea. Uh, I, I take notes from you in chat. Uh, do NASA buy photos for astrophotography from us? Angus, good day, sir. No, Vikram, um, NASA is, and I believe, I'm trying to remember this. I hope I get it right. Because they, they do their own photography, their own videos, of course. And so they make it public domain, um, trying to be transparent with the public. And so a lot of their assets are free for us. So, yeah. All right, let's get back into... The creative circus um and there's a couple things i missed first off in chat i'm sorry bruce if you're here i don't think bruce is here yet but he talked about the animal crackers uh was your time as an astronaut or before or after your stint as a back backup dancer for bananarama <sighs> <clears throat> okay okay now, we've got Mafu here. Open this up. So this is our first piece of work that has been added. And let's close that down. Let me go ahead, copy that. Library of Congress images are all copyright free, free to use. And if you're into college and or collage and textures, 
that a large resource at your fingertips. Good tip, Sandrine. Okay. So Mafu wrote, well, Gareth, share links. Share links in chat, Gareth, to your Instagram. Um, I'm a little sick with a cold right now, but I really wanted to join in. It's little Sean doing some fire tricks. I hope it's clear and simple to understand. Ooh, it's, yeah, it, it was snowing here today. Um, Annika, good morning. It was snowing here today when I came back from shopping. So, yeah. This is really cool. Bruce, I was just talking about you. Your ears were burning. Do I browse NASA to get those public domain photos? Yes. Yep, just Google NASA. <clears throat> That's it. Really good sketches here, Mafu. Um, wow. I like I like what how you've got going here. Going from the the stick figure, building it up through. Very nice. Oh, Sandrine. Yep, we'll get back. Um, Sandrine said, or you could go to the Art in Space Challenge. And if you scroll up, it's going to be way up at the top. Sandrine actually uh, put together a series of resources for space imagery and whatnot. So... Okay, we, it's going to take too long, but just scroll up. Oh, thank you, Oliver. And all right, let me click that over here. Open that up. All right. It was on gesture and gravity. Ooh. I see that. Yeah, up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. Fun line work. I like that. Then we've got the final piece. Now, Mafu. <clears throat> I love it. Thank you. Oh, list of resources. Thank you, Sandrine. Stuart says those are cool sketches. They are. They are. I find it amusing in this one here. The idea now, of course, um, this is in reference to, maybe I should bring it up. I should bring it up. I did not want to. I wasn't going to. Mafu made me do it. This, it is in reference to a puppet of myself that I made. Um, and Mafu has, I think, lovingly started to call it Little Sean. So this is the puppet that I made. And that is the reference that Mafu used. Um, and I find it funny that you went from a very normal looking size head to a huge head which i get you know my head looks big there okay um i have i i do have one thing about this as much as i love it i feel the background is too dark there's not enough contrast going between the now I understand why you did it but there's not enough contrast going between the black suit 
and uh, the background. So you may want to think about trying different different backgrounds. Now I understand why you did a dark background um, to get the glow effect, and which turned out great. I, I really like it. You know, I really like the fact you've got the blue flames here almost as a tie. Um, yeah, but I would play around with the different backgrounds. That's it. Okay, uh, Mafu, I need to, okay. Wow, a lot of chat. Uh, Angus says, nice sketches, great example of gesture drawing showing the movement and weight of the body. Yeah, this was very impressive. Um, up here, you can see the weight of the body. Now, I wish I was that skinny, but am not. Uh, looks really good. Mafu says, I'm so happy you love it. I'm overwhelmed. Can I ask if you recognize my references? I don't know. I do not. Okay. Stuart says, been working on motion design. I should take notes from Mafu for sketching out ideas. Yep. I draw an anime art style, so it's only natural I draw a chitty. Oh, yeah, the line of action. Great work, Stuart says. Yeah. I should be the one learning from you, if I'm honest. Mafu! No! No, no, no. That's, that is the wrong, that's the wrong term. Uh, not even the blue flames. No, I get, I know the boom. I get the blue flames. I get it. I got that. I would, I thought, <sighs> yes. Mafu. Thank you for being the first to post to the daily, to the cre <laughs> creative circus challenge. Boom. Okay, so it's a combination of Little Sean and the boom. Oh my goodness, that's funny. <clears throat> oh, ah, okay. Um, that's my only suggestion, Mafu, is play around with the background just to see what you can get, uh, maybe gradients of some sort, but just trying to bring up some type of contrast from the background to the um, to the suit. Other than that, I love it, love it. And yes, Bruce, thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Um, you're bringing me back. I started going off on a tangent there. Uh, Bruce says, we learn from everyone in this community. Absolutely. So Mafu, you have a style that um, is unique to you. And so the idea of us being able to learn from each other um, is very important. Add the link to Discord. We can all check it out. Thanks, Mafu. Um... Look at the blue and take a shade from that and you'll get the contrast you need to work through. Okay. I thought I put the link in. Did I not? Let me, I'll put the link in again. There we go. <clears throat> we learn and know our mistakes and erase them to improve. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And if you do change the background, okay, you said do better background next time. Um, sh share with us. Share with us. We we love to watch, see the process. The idea of you sharing your sketches uh, is, is amazing. It's great. And then for you to be able to maybe go by and take a little bit of feedback, which isn't, I mean, this is just constructive and being able to maybe improve, but then again, you may try a different background and simply say, no, I don't like it. I like the original, which because it's your artwork is perfectly fine. So that is very cool. That is cool. Um, All right. Thank you again, Mafu. That's awesome. 
Also, it has been brought to my attention. Let me jump into the live stream. Uh, Devlin, who I haven't seen here yet, maybe Clever will show up, but was talking about do -do -do, the circus experience in the U.S. usually include carnival, car, carnival, carnival rides, Frank, hello, snacks, games, and prizes. Carousels are an art in motion. That and bumper cars may be a nice addition to the list. They are fun and sparky too. Now, we did talk about the fair experience, and so I explained that. And it is fine if you want to add that to your circus art, but the main theme of the challenge is the circus. So just so you know, that's the main theme. So even if you go into the, you could, you could do the fair, you could have the bumper cars, you could have the, the rides or the games and prizes and huge, ugly stuffed animals, um, things of that nature, and maybe have the back top of the car, of the circus in the back. So you can go take it that way. And I have no problem with that. But the circus has to be somehow within the theme. That's that's pretty much the only rule here. Um, are carnival baubles a thing? I don't know what that is. And yes, down here at the bottom, we forgot to add peanuts. Peanuts, popcorn, cotton candy, ah. I, you have to let me know what are what are carnival baubles. I'm googling now. Or are you just saying that to, because I had problems saying carnival, <laughs> which is possible. Oh, <clears throat> no. Ah, okay, I got it. It's funny, this came up though, when I Googled it, it actually came up with like carnival ornaments. I feel bad today, I had a blue screen on my personal main PC, the SSD where OS seems dead. Oh, Frank, I am sorry. Oh, that sucks. Oh, okay. We've got Gareth Williams. Let me go ahead and put this into chat. For any of you not following Gareth, <laughs> go ahead, give him a follow on Instagram. All right. So what do we got here? Envisioned. A couple of posters I ran overnight, which may be entered into the Kozo Photography Community Challenge Creative Circus. Oh, Gareth, it's a K, it's a K. <clears throat> All right. I, I hate this. That it cuts everything off down here. Kozel create. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, Stretch Winkle. Don't put my phone number in there. <clears throat> That's great. I love what you got going there, Gareth. Um, yeah, Instagram just upsets me the way it cuts stuff off. And, and I know I've said this before, but... <clears throat> I hate the fact that we have to be chained by social media's sizes. I, I, I don't like that. I'm not happy with that. Ugh.
Okay. Let's check out the second one. Wait for it. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. I am digging the colors you've got going on here. Great work. Um, the sense of motion, the colors. Wow. This is great. Oh my gosh. K in the upper case. Well, K in the upper case in your comics if you don't get the hint. A. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, Sandrine says that's a good Sandrine says there's a hint of Russian early century posters there. Yeah. Ooh, the first one has a trapeze film vibes with Tony Curtis. Dang. Yeah, that's that's great, Gareth. That's great. Great work. That's all you've got. Yeah. I've seen this guy. Colors blocked in. Great work. Good job, Gareth. Great work. All right. Yeah, I wanted the old Russian poster look, but used Polish instead of Russian. Did you Google Polish posters? That's too many P's. Too many P's. <laughs> um, oh, what do we got? Here's the video I've learned for gesture and gravity from. Cool, thank you for posting that, Mafu. Um, if anybody is interested in that, it is in the stream chat. You can check that out. And I think that's pretty much all we've got going on today. Polish poster. Oh, just... Oliver. Why do, why do you all hate me so much? <laughs> Let's see what we can get Sean to not say right. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to jump into your photos to edit. So uh, in the future, I'm going to be doing another stream uh, about how to edit your photos. We're going to work on that today uh, because I want to. And so if you have unedited photos, uh, feel free to post them here on my Discord page up above my head and it will be part of my future stream. So let's go ahead and I was really hoping Jeff Yas was going to, or Yaz was going to be jumping in today. Um, let's talk about that really. You know what? No, let's wait. Let's wait just in case Jeff comes in. If Jeff comes in on his stream last night on Adobe Live, um, he, with his finished poster work, he was taking it into Lightroom from Photoshop into Lightroom and using presets to just to just to make it pop, which is great workflow. And unfortunately, some of you may remember this. I did a stream. Oh, geez, a month month and a half, two months ago. I don't even remember when I did it. And Behance lost it. And within, I'm so disappointed because the stream was so good about taking the ideas from photography, depth of field, and bringing them into a uh, painting. That as a painter, wanting to draw the eye to the correct location by using depth of fields, and that nature, and also taking it a step further. Whereas when you are completing your painting, taking it into um, 
Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom or Lightroom Classic and just bringing, making it pop, you know, being able to play with it non-destructively. The stream was too good for Behance. Yeah. Yeah. They know about it. And Bruce, yes. Yeah. This was, it was because of you, Bruce. Bruce says, oh man, yes, I remember that one. So many great tips in that stream. I don't know if Behance is still working on it. Um, let's jump in, go to Behance. Behance has their own Discord for streamers. So if I jump into streamer Q&A, I will scroll up and you can see I've been communicating with them. Oh, it was November 17th, two months ago. Two months ago. I really, uh, I don't know. Okay, no, no. You in chat, let me know because you were there. Some of you may remember that stream. Do you want me to continue asking for it? Because I was at the point now, you know, they from 1117 all the way to Christmas, I was dealing with Lindsay and um, she says, don't expect anything till the new year. So I don't know if that's something that I should be pursuing, if I should bother them with it. So in chat, you let me know if you want me to. If that is something that is of interest to you, I will do it. <clears throat> General, hello. It's an older chat, sir, but it checks out. Um, Anki says, I'm watching this stream on my iPad and commenting really sucks. Have to start my computer. Bruce says, I do. Okay, Bruce. Yep, let's do this. I am going to switch screens really quick here. Um... And it was it, a lot of the time, let's see, any new news? I'm going to blame you, by the way. Tahid, hello. Well, the thing is, they need to figure it out one way or another so it doesn't happen again. They figured, normally I use a, lose maybe one stream a month, uh, and they're, they're able to bring it up within a few days. Um, they said that this time it was something different, and um, yeah. Okay. I'm totally throwing you guys under the bus. <laughs> I'm saying any new news on my lost stream. Sorry to be a bother, but my community is asking for it. Okay, it's up. <clears throat> I mean, I guess... I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the wheels are in motion. Uh, Tahid says, I am new here. Welcome in. How are you doing? What? Whoa. Jeez. Dogs are going crazy out there. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, senior designer, vector art. Ooh. Okay. All right. Anki says it snows outside. Yeah, it snowed here. Um, so, is it Tahi? I don't know if it's Tahid or Tahid. I apologize if I'm messing your name up. But um, welcome in. And just so you know, within our community, this is what we do. The fact that you came in, you said hello, you introduced yourself, um, I, I'll take a look at your Behance. If you would have came in and just said, hey, look at my work, <laughs> this would not be happening right now. 
So thank you for entering my stream this way. <clears throat> That's a lot of color over there, Vikram. <laughs> okay, senior designer. We've got t-shirt designs. Business card, logo, SVG. Art vector art. Nice setup. Okay, you are new. December 22nd, 2022. Six years of service. Nice. <clears throat> oh, Stuart. I think I can boot mods. <laughs> I should have the ultimate power. I don't know, but I should. All right. Let's take a look. Ooh, that one's, that is really kind of cool. I'm digging that. You have some really nice word logos. Um, Bruce says, my apologies. As much as I want to stay and enjoy the stream today, I unfortunately have to step out. We'll definitely catch the replay. Bruce, we'll be working on your work, on your photos today. So um, make sure to watch the replay. <clears throat> Okay, this is a bit limiting. <laughs> I mean, come on, who shoots with a cannon? Ooh, that is nice. That's, I like that. Wow, you got a lot going on here. All right, let's jump into one of these really quick. Um, that one caught my eye. Yeah, let's jump this one. We have logo design. Okay. <clears throat> Many a shot through a cannon in the creative circus. <laughs> um, okay, Bruce, what I'll do is I'll start with Vikram's and jump into Lydia's and I'll work on your stuff at the end. That's that's what, what we'll figure on doing. Um, Sandrine says, very cool logos. I feel they would have more impact if they were company names, even fake ones instead of generic text. Also mock-ups. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, here's, a, here's a prime example. Now, <clears throat> when you were showing off a piece now that you could be selling these and you could be selling these as a um as mock-up or mock-ups whatever i completely understand that you're just having this as the bare minimum if you are trying to sell yourself as a graphic designer um i want to see more than just this okay i want to know how you got from point a to point b so show us your process. This is what will impress anybody. Just this? Okay, nice, cool, nice. Um, you know, you yeah, you do good work. How did you get there? That's what I wanna see. I wanna see your sketches. I wanna see not, I don't wanna see this just in white. I wanna see this in multiple colors. I wanna see the, uh, uh, or A to Z in this case. Yes, I wanna see the whole thing. I wanna see it used in mock-ups. I wanna see it used as a, uh, just a word logo, a graphic logo. I wanna see every type of uh, use that you could use this logo in. So I wanna see it in business heads. I wanna see it business cards, small, big, different colors. I wanna see a color palette with the actual colors but with it, I want to see fonts. I don't, I don't know what this font is. Give me a font. Give me a color palette. Give me the process. Give me your sketches. Take a screenshot of your Illustrator file with 800 million of your designs before you got to this one. Jack says, tell us the story. Yes, absolutely. And to give you, to, and I know we're talking apples and oranges, 
But this is what I'm talking about. We want to see the design. Mafu was able to take the work and say, okay, this is where I started. Here's my sketching. I'm working through the process of getting to here, to the line art. Now we're getting into color and now we have the final piece. So we've got to see Mafu's brain, how Mafu is thinking to get to this process. And that's what we love as artists. You have to remember, the majority of the people here on Behance are going to be artists, designers, and if they're looking for other designers, other people, or they want to see how you work, um, who's got, who has, Jack, do you, I, I, I need a process, or does it Angus, um, who, who's got a good process that I'm talking about, Sandrine, what? Oh, Sandrine nailed it. Okay. Personal identity. Natasha. I do not know who Natasha is. The Frenchy Vanilla Project. Thank you, Jack. Let me bring you back up here. Jack, can you, um, Jane or Sandrine, yeah, can you throw me a link, Jack? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to be scrolling over here. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, Oliver Mod Power. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm clicking too much. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. So this is awesome. Uh, Jack is a streamer. So if you are not aware, Jack is with Adobe Live, is a streamer, and um, also does her personal streams. So we've got the Frenchie Vanilla. And we're going through, oh, this is great. All right, so we've got the brief. We've got a mission statement. We have all the initial concepts. These are great. We've got the words, we've got the dogs. Wow. And I know, Tahid, I hope you're still here and I didn't like scare you off. Um, this sounds like a lot of work and it is but you probably put a lot of work into creating your logos. And so being able to take the process, your own process and documenting that is very important. Final logos. Okay, still here, great. And this is this is great, Jack. I mean, just, I have not looked at this. You can see I haven't appreciated it. Um, different uses, different backgrounds. And this is really important that you're able to show, okay, we've got the black logo here on a white background. We've got our colors going on on this one. Then we got to go on a dark background. You never know what your logo is going to go on. So we've got the white logo, same different colors, but making it pop, good contrast. We've got our word logos. Also how your logo looks on packaging. Yes, mock-ups, mock-ups, mock-ups. We love mock-ups in this community. <laughs> uh, this is great. I, uh, the difference between this one here, oh, it looks night and day, but it's not. Just the lacking of the words. Okay, I'm digging that. That's all to attract the client. Yes, we've got all our uh, typography. Uh, okay, I understand. Cool. Great use of the pause. 
using it as your color palettes. And oh, another tip, and I don't know if I got this from Jack, either got it from Jack or Hawk, name your colors. You may not just, this may not actually be the name Midnight Blue, or it could be, I don't know. Name it, New York Pink, I'm doubting it. But Jack went through and named these because if you are putting together this, this entire work, you don't want a client to go, you know what, I don't like EE9895. You're gonna be going like, oh, what's that? Giving it a name, the client can get to you easy saying, hey, you know the New York Pink, can it be different? So you're trying to show how your brain works. This is awesome. Wow. So much. Okay. I want to see what Sandrine. Jack, thank you for sharing that. Um, here it is. <clears throat> We've got a redesign. Personal branding, visual identity. So we've got the brief. We've got the logo. Oh, I love that. I love that. That looks awesome. Our hex codes. Now, these are not named. We have the hex, the RGB, and the Pantone, which is perfect, but no names, but that's okay. It's just taking it. Details. Details. All right, we've got our fonts. mock-up that's a good looking mock-up I like the pattern yeah that's that's actually really nice more mock-ups Ooh, nice displacement map. A little bit of um, grittiness and texture added in there. Give it some age. Looks like an old t-shirt. Nice. That's cool. We've got some motion, more mock-ups. Yeah, I'm digging that. Sandrine, thank you for finding that and sharing it. Um, it is, it's so nice. Um, and, and hopefully you take this the right way. Uh, I am not saying anything bad about your work. It's just your presentation of your work. When you're, I'm looking at your homepage, I'm thinking, okay, this is nice. You know, I really like what you've got going on here. Um, I want more. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I, I, I want more. I want to know more about this project. So hopefully, welcome to the community. Hopefully you come back. Um, don't take it the wrong way. You know, we, I, I do this because I catch myself making these mistakes. Um, I want more, but I know I shouldn't. That's true. Sandrine says, take the logo you're most proud of, and there's good reason to be proud, and expand it with a lots of usage, usages. It will look great and makes for great, good portfolio pieces. Yes. Yep. And so you know, if I jump back into my Behance, one of the things that I was not aware of for like years is you can move your projects around. So I can move this over here, I can move this here, I can move that one there. So make sure that you've got whatever it is that you're most proud of at the top. Uh, Stuart says, you need a twin brother that keeps telling more, I wanna see more. Lydia, hello? Um, oh. Lydia says, sorry, I didn't get any notice again. I'm sorry, Lydia, but I'm glad you're here. We're going to be working on your photos. <clears throat> so on your Behance page, make sure that you've got your projects laid out in what you want to show off. But 
Thanks for jumping in. Thank you for being nice. I hope you stick around and um, be active in chat. Take a look at other people's works. Uh, give them follows. They will turn around, do the same to you. So, welcome in. I almost want to finish this one out. Oh! Packaging. That looks great. We've got banners. Is this, Jack, is this an actual company? I should have read the brief in the beginning. This is a real client, yes. I did not, my bad, I didn't read the brief. <laughs> um, Barry, hello. Yeah, that's awesome. That That's awesome. Great work, Jack. Spectacular. I don't know if she has her Etsy shop. Oh, that's cool. And, and you know, I want to thank you. I want to thank Jack, Sandrine, and really everybody within the community because... It's amazing at the fact of the level of work that we have here. And I can show it off. When new people come in, when somebody, you know, let it be um, young designers, new people new to Behance that may not know how to present themselves. Uh, it's great the fact that you, as the community, you're willing to actually let yourself be shown to other people. So... Thank you. That, that actually, I bet you it means a lot to new people and even our, our regulars. So thank you for letting me do that. All right. 50 minutes and we're just getting in the Lightroom Classic. <laughs> All right. So we've got a... Uh, a section of new photos. Not everybody's ready to accept feedback and thumbs up if you're willing to. <clears throat> yes, Sandrine has a really good point. Um, it means a lot. And okay, no, this, now, now you got me fired up again. <laughs> People that come in, and this is part of my stream definition, the look at my work. People that come in and say, look at my work, look at my work, look at my profile and, or portfolio, and um, trigonometry time, yes. Uh, don't be so obtuse, general. So <clears throat> people that come in and do that and don't have any work, I'm, I'm stunned by that. Like maybe they don't expect for us to actually look. <laughs> Maybe there's not used to having streamers say, yeah, I'll look. And for those of you that are, you know, all the community, you know, I'll look. Um, so it, it, it's funny to me. The people that aren't willing to say, hey, Sean, I have a new project. Hey, Sean. Hey, by the way, Sean, I got a new project. Want to check it out? Uh, which I know a ton of you do that and you never tell me. <laughs> I I find out, I get like an email, inspiration from Behance, and I'm like, whoa, Jane's got a new project. What, did, what, what the heck? Oliver says, hey, Sean, I don't have any new projects. <laughs> General, I don't know what that is. I, uh, Daryl, hello. I heard the call, please look at my work. <laughs> Daryl, you know you don't use the term, uh, uh, please. Oh, 
Ferry says, I just have an issue on communication in phot photography and it fears me more than any ghosts. Ferry, please expand on that. I have an issue on communication in photography. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Why would you ask me that? If I, if, if I want a cigarette, I don't get that. All right. Directing. Oh, do you mean posing? Deepak, hello, welcome back. It is good to see you. Um, do you mean posing people, fairy? Okay. All right, we're gonna do a tangent. We're doing a tangent. Fairy, this is for you, and this is for absolutely anybody else. Doing portrait photography. Let me see what I've got here. Um, here we go. I call it directing because I direct her expression also, not only her pose. <clears throat> All right, I do not have these. Where are these? Um, let, uh, hold on, everybody. These are photos that Vikram sent a while ago. The idea of posing, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking which is going to be the best thing to look at here. Let's, mm -mm. okay. I'm great at posing. It's everyone else who's wrong. All right. <clears throat> this was from my very first portrait shoot. Um, I used to, and I'm gonna be brutally honest here, whereas I hated having people in my photos. I was doing travel and landscape photography, and I would wait forever for people to not be in my photos. Um, so I got the opportunity to actually do a photo shoot with this woman, and it was spectacular. Um, the issue, I was brand new. I'd never done this before. I didn't know how to pose but she was a model already. She knew how to pose, but the person that was running the, it, I, I guess you would call it a workshop. It was, it was two, um, two photographers, the model, and then the guy that was running the workshop. And um, he told her how to restrain herself to make us tell her to do certain things. We didn't know what we were doing. It was our first time. So he told her never to smile. Now her name is Kat. She has an absolutely gorgeous smile. Um, I didn't know it. This was the first time I met her. This is the first time anything at all. And so the entire, the entire shoot, she never smiled. She never showed her teeth once, once. Uh, so this was the worst, that's a weird instruction. It was, it was to challenge us as the photographer to see that and make it change. Well, we failed, okay? Next off, this was the worst experience for me to have as a portrait photographer. I, I will tell you right now, if you wanna do portraits and you're starting out, do not get a professional model. If you have somebody 
that um, that models that knows what they're doing and you're trying to get into it and you want to take photos and you have a problem with posing don't ask them you have to just as fairy said you have to be you have to pose them direct them um, so having somebody who knows exactly what to do and all you're focused on is the camera you are focused on making sure you have the right settings and you lose because you're not directing you're not connecting with the model because she's perfect she's doing everything great it it was horrible the next time i did a portrait i was so frustrated because the person was not doing anything i wanted them to do because i wasn't telling them and i didn't learn how so tip one if you're doing trying to do portraits make sure you do not use a model tip one Okay, um, I'm just catching up on chat. Yeah, I use a neur neuro filters to make her smile. Oh, that's mean, Sandrine. Okay. Vikram says, here's what I found. Don't expect your model to know what to do or to move easily. It takes a lot of experience for a model to know what she's doing or he's doing so help her out and give her direction obviously to give direction you need to know what to say this is what stumps a lot of photographers me included <laughs> gareth says tip two never touch a model without permission okay stray hairs okay this is the first thing now you can see here we have a ton of stray hairs okay now we did not have hair and makeup on set um so if you're gonna do that if you're gonna like i'm I, you have a hair here can i move it um or or you go go like this all right <clears throat> uh, i was just making sure i was caught up caught up on chat this is what I do when I am trying to get a portrait of anybody. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing headshots, three quarter, or if I'm doing full body shots in any position at all. The very first thing that you do is you make a connection. And the easiest way to do that is talk about their feet. This sounds absolutely ridiculous. And I was doing a ton of headshots in the studio. Um, I know I've told this story before, but the very first thing people come in and you're like, okay, we're doing, this is what we're doing. We're doing business portraits, whatever. And this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with a straight on and they go, they, they just, they tighten up their shoulders get come up they get all tight and it's just you can see all the tension being built now the tension actually starts in their feet in their legs so the very first thing that I always do and let's see this guy this this is a good one okay First thing that I always tell them is, are your feet comfortable? And they're like, what? I'm like, okay, <clears throat> this is how I want you to, I want you to stand. Okay. I'm not showing your feet. It doesn't care. So if you stand normally, I want your feet to be in that direction. So if you're lean, if you put a hip out, if you stand on one foot, if you kind of lean, I want you to stand as if you're standing on the street corner talking with your friends. That's how I want your feet to be. I want your feet to be as comfortable as possible. And at this point, people are like, what are you talking about? Why, why are you talking about my feet? Eyesight, pics, hello. I am doing well. I hope you're doing well also. Good to see you. Um, so it gets out of their head 
they're not thinking what they look like. What am I doing with my hands? What am I doing? You know, uh, what, what am I doing? They don't expect you to be talking about their feet. So the very first thing is I make sure that their feet are comfortable, that they're standing comfortable. That's the very first thing. Then, ah, you're French. I am sorry, I do not speak French. <laughs> so that's the very first thing is you're, you're getting them comfortable and you're talking about them and you're noticing little bits and pieces of them that they normally aren't expecting you to look at. They, they expect you to come in and say, okay, I want you to stand like this. I want you to stand like this. I want you to tilt your head this way. I want you to do this. And that's what they're expecting. Nope, you're talking about feet. <laughs> so this was the best thing. Now, um, just like French, no problem. I learned my English. Good idea. I'm working in a German studio. I don't have the technical language to pose anybody at all. This was at a German... Um, <laughs> this was... <laughs> sit down, look at me, say cheese, off you go next. No. Um, <clears throat> this was at a dance club um, where doing like a red carpet type thing. Felipe, hello, welcome in. And so what I did is I had a piece of tape on the ground. And in my only German that I knew is I told him to put his foot on the tape. Which foot on the tape? And they would do it. And so at that point in time, I've got their location for where the lighting is. Everything is set up. And then I work from the ground up. I work from the feet and I get them comfortable. And the next most important thing is mirroring. I'm gonna go big head here, big head. I'm missing a ton of chat, but I'm on a roll here. Mirroring is the most important thing when you are trying to get anybody to do something, okay? Just like what Oliver says, sit down, look at me, say cheese. No. <clears throat> so the very first thing that you do is you go ahead, boom, you do it just, you got them standing, right? You take care of the feet, you have the location, then you take a quick photo, you make sure you're just double checking lighting. Okay, now you're ready to work with it. Once you have the lighting, once you have the settings of the camera, that from that point on, you connect with the subject. You, you do not take a photo, look at your camera. Take a photo, look at your camera, okay? That's like if I'm sitting here and I'm working like this all day and I never look up at you, you feel disconnected. You There's not a connection between between you and I. Um, the fact that I try to look at the camera as much as I can is because I'm trying to make a connection with you. And it's the exact same thing as being a photographer. So you do that one time. You take your photo, you check your lighting, and then from that point on, okay. Now, mirroring. Mirroring is doing the exact thing that you want the subject to do, but you're mirroring them, right? So if I want you to tilt your head this way, okay, I would say tilt your head this way. Now the problem is I don't have the language, right? I honestly did not have the language. so. What I learned to do is you act as if you're grabbing the person by the head and you go do this. And that little movement of your hand, if you want them to move their chin, you act like you're grabbing their chin and you say, you know, move your chin this way, move your chin this way. Um, bring your chin down, bring your chin up. So you mirror the exact same thing that you're doing. Uh, tilt your shoulders like this. Okay, you know, bring this one down, this one up. So you are showing the pose that you want. 
So you want to be able to look at um, photos. You want to look and learn poses that you've got. So this gentleman here, very easy. Mirroring is like when you take cat photos, you make the gesture and they follow. Apparently it works with dogs too. Didn't know that. <clears throat> this gentleman here, first thing that I ended up doing is took care of his feet. Then I had, as soon as you, now, unfortunately with women's pants today, because they're so high and pockets are high, it doesn't work. But you never want anything straight. You do not want straight shoulders, straight heads, you know, everything straight. You don't want that. So you want everything tilted. You want to turn slightly. You want a high low in the shoulder. And the easiest way to do it is the placement of the hands. Now, he has taken a look at the hands. They're soft. I'm okay with that. Normally, I prefer soft. I prefer, I always make sure I have soft hands. It's not a closed fist, but it's a, it's somewhat of a fist. It's a masculine pose right there. Um, I also taken a look at his watch, Muhammad, hello. So the very first thing is to get the slight slope within the shoulders is having one hand in the pocket, one hand out. Um, sometimes, depending upon what they are wearing, I will have them loop their thumb in a belt loop or in the side of their pants, depending upon how much of a shoulder lean I want. Um, do you want them to lean in towards you? Now, 99% of the time, you never want anybody lean, leaning back. Never, never, never. <clears throat> you want them leaning into you. You want them to be making contact to you with the photo. So you want them in. Now, again, this is, this is another, another huge learning lesson. You want them to extend everything out. You don't want any straight arms, straight legs, straight bodies, nothing, but you want everything stretched out. So the best way to do it, normally if you go stand tall, people go, they stand tall like this. Nope, nope. <clears throat> you grab the back of the head and you pull up, you pull up. Now, when they do it, they drop their chin, right? Okay, so I'm extending my neck out, I'm extending my back, I'm taller, I'm straighter, my shoulders are automatically slightly going back just because of that movement. When I'm sitting normal, see this? That's horrible, bad. If I extend out, I've extended everything up, I'm out. Next off, chin. We're shooting in a 2D world, and I know I've talked about this before, but shooting in a 2D world, your chin, you want to, and I show this to people and they laugh and it's great because as soon as they start laughing, I say it, it, it's a win. I'm like, okay, you're a duck, be a duck. So you're extended. Then I say, push your chin out like a duck. Now, a duck is an enton. So I would say, quack, quack. People laugh. That's what you want. You're making a connection. So you say, push your chin out. It stretches everything here. Now, when you push your chin out like this, stretching everything, you've got better stuff going on. But now my chin is going up. So bring the chin down. And again, I say, bring your chin down and bring the chin down tilt like this. So you get this look where you're coming in and you're tilted. So being able to mirror and also show what you want them to do. So important, so important. <clears throat> So the idea of having a language to being able to direct and also uh, to pose somebody is not needed, is absolutely not needed. Uh, 
Zeno, hello, Zeno Pixel over on Twitch. I heard some photographers use push your forehead, which results in pushing out the chin without raising it. Let's try that. Hello, by the way, hello, Zeno. Okay, so push, push your forehead. I'm, I'm checking my screen. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Rick, hello. Some people say quack instead of cheese. Here they say spaghetti. In Germany, they sp say spaghetti. Um, yeah, I Zeno, good tip. Good tip. So Zeno over on Twitch, he says to say push your forehead out, which doesn't bring the chin up. So if you say stick your chin out, yeah, you do, you bring it up, then you have to bring it down. I'm with that. I'm with that. That's a good tip right there. Um, I've missed a ton of chat. Let me... Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. The, the one thing... Well, we've got this one here. Uh, let me catch up on chat really quick. I've, I've missed a ton. I've been on fire. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, I always say don't put your back on the wall, but instead of put your butt instead of on the wall, lean your upper body for, forward. Yeah, fairy. Absolutely. I try not to do any leaning, like no leaning. Um, and let, let me show you what I mean. Okay. So, um, if I don't want anybody to lean, you don't lean, you don't hold yourself up. You don't, if you're doing headshots or something like that, I don't want you to lean. If you're sitting up like this, we're extended. Then just as, just as fairy says, you go from the waist and lean and come forward from the waist. And then if you're doing any type of hand photography, you, you want the touching, it's very soft. You're not actually putting any weight on the hand at all. So you bring it up, you come forward from the waist, and then you bring the hand up, and there's nothing actually touching. This is not good, by the way. Too much, too big. Um, this is okay getting with the back of the hand or the side of the hand like that, but this is almost as big as your face. So it's not a wise point, wise position or a, a pose to be in. But I like that. Always, always lean from the waist. <clears throat> okay, what did I miss? Um... Wow, I did see something I missed up here at the top. <laughs> General. <laughs> uh, they're, everyone, they're talking Zoolander. Um, at Fairy says, may I share the link of directing, Sean? Yeah, of course. Okay. All right, I think I caught up on chat. Um, always this, this, this photo here. Um, I love this. I wish the baby was, you know, smiling, <laughs> but this is so simple. A couple came into the studio, uh, with their new baby and I just like, Hey, let's, let's, let's just do a couple quick shoots. So this was actually a gift to them. Now, the very first thing that you do is you do your standard, your standard little portrait. Okay. And this is important. Now I'm looking at this photo and I'm seeing many, many, many things wrong with this. Okay. Uh, which I did not see initially. Number one, the woman, she needs to have her hilt, her head tilted towards the man, tilted that way. You want, if you are showing any type of connection, you want the, the um, heads to be tilted towards each other. 
Also, if you can see here, she's standing on this leg, her hip is out and she's leaning away. Uh, I really should have had her lean towards, I'm opposite here, leaning towards and tilting her head towards her man. Um, that's what I should have done and I missed it here. I absolutely missed that. So that is one of the things you're looking for to show connection. Tilt those heads together, tilt them in. You're trying to bring everything together. Um, this is really good up here. If you have any, you don't want missing digits, okay? Now they talk about some people are absolutely 100% against having any type of hands coming up. Oh. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Okay, sorry. I was going to go get an arm and show you what it looks like, but I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, so let's get back into here. Some people are against the idea of having uh, in invisible people fingers that they're like, oh, I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know who these are. But having one or two digits, this is my thought, mine only, um, having one or two di digits would be wrong, but having them all is okay. And you can see the arm angle is okay. Alien hands, no. Okay, next off, we've touching, always touching. So I screwed up on the leaning, completely my fault, and I should have had them go in. Next off, triangles. We've got three people, easy to make a triangle with heads. We've got one, two, three. I should have had her on the same plane as her man. I should have had her leaning towards him. I'm going the wrong way. Leaning towards, tilting the head, and leaning from the waist slightly in. That's what I should have done, and I didn't. This is a nice photo. Definitely can be improved. So, you know, I will rip on my photos as much as anything. So once you get done doing the photos you have to take, okay? These are the photos I have to take. I gotta do, I have to do the little family portrait, which is, you have to. It's digital, who cares? You're shooting raw. Next off, have fun. Do something fun. Make the experience fun for the people. Um, doing something kind of out of the ordinary, doing something just as simple as this. This is such a wonderful, loving photo. That's why it's on my, on my um, portfolio. Angus, have a great day. So have fun, have fun. Um, directing, you wanna have a conversation with the person if you can having a conversation with them just very simply this is what i'm thinking of doing this is what i want due to the makeup blah 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 and you're done once you have that conversation then you can just sit there and go okay moving around uh set pose shoot fix done dun 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 well all right so, Fairy, let me know if that helps you. I would, I would actually like to know. All right, we're jumping into Lightroom Classic now. Um, that helps me a lot. Thanks, by the way. Uh, you're Fairy. You're welcome. I mean, this when I started. Um, this is why I started this stream. And for those of you over on Twitch and Behance, or excuse me, Twitch and YouTube, this is my 210th stream. Um, so I've done over 200 streams only on Behance. And when I started streaming, it was, I scratched that. I wanted more photography. 
I did not see the amount or the style of photography that I wanted on Behance on Adobe Live. And so I wanted to give a place for us photographers. Uh, 5,000 streams. No, I do have a, like 165,000 views, which is good. Uh, I got some tips that will help me next time. I'll shoot headshots at work. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, Anki? This is this is interesting. The other thing, people, people find out, okay, you're a photographer. Um, or they ask, can you shoot? And this may not be your job, Anki. You may offer to do the headshots, or you may say, you know, I can do it. Um, but the idea of when you come into certain situations, and the main one here is when you are photographing families. Um, Websen, hello. Okay, could have said you're live on Behance 2. Was wondering why I was missing chat on Twitch. I'm, oh, I'm, I am sorry. I apologize. Um, I did at the beginning. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm just checking out your, your Behance really quick. Um, all right, <clears throat> when you are put into certain situations as the photographer, and this is really in any type of situation, but I think this is important to say, when you are shooting, let's say families, uh, your family, not families in general, but your family, or work, you may be in a position or be treated as if you're not in control, such as, let's say, family dynamics, and you're taking photos of your parents and brothers and sisters, and, you know, your brothers and sisters are giving you a bad time, your mom and dad are trying to tell you what to do, um, and it doesn't matter what age you are, okay? <laughs> It happens, it happens, it happens. So the idea, the moment that you come in and you take control of the situation and getting back, getting back into the portrait, immediately people are saying, okay, <clears throat> let's, let's, we're gonna do this portrait. And everybody just goes and sits down or goes, you know, there, and you're like, no. No, no, everybody come out. I will stage you. I will put you in one at a time. So you are you are trying to create triangles. Sandrine, have a great day. So you're trying to create triangles. So you set the first person, you tell them, this is what I want you to do. And you're talking directly to them. This, this isn't group. You're not talking to the group. You're talking to one person at a time. You're looking at them in the eye. You say, I would like you to stand right here or I'd like you to sit right here, please. This is what I'm gonna have you do. So go ahead and get yourself in that position. Next, you bring the second person in and in your mind, you're thinking triangle. You're thinking three sides, three points. So you know the position that you want that head to be in and where the third person is gonna go. Then from there, you got the fourth person. Now you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna have them at this height or here. So you are constantly thinking triangle and that's all you see. You can get everybody turned. You can you know, do the general posing saying, okay, you know, make sure when you're sitting to turn like this, don't put your hands in your lap and you'll look at the camera and just sit like that for right now, please. Thank you. Okay, grab the next person, triangle. Grab the next person. And it doesn't matter. Um, there's a, was it Vogue? I think Vogue, I cannot remember the photographer's name, did a series of like a hundred different, um, I th I th not a hundred, I think there was like 35 or 40 supermodels in this huge long panoramic that, that this photographer made. And the process that they used was this triangle and sat them, and I think there's even a video of it, like sat them one at a time. And when you know the triangle race ratios and you're looking at that, you can look at a group shot and see, okay, here's the triangles. This is what they did. This is what they were doing. I can see that. And so it 
builds upon itself and it can get bigger and bigger and grow taller. So once you start with that first triangle, the only thing is stopping you from there is space and number of subjects. So I don't know where I got off on that tangent, <laughs> but that's important. Uh, every person a triangle sometimes. All right. <clears throat> Uh, what about golden golden ratio? Golden ratio has no, no well, triangles. Triangles. Oh, Devlin says passionate. Because I love this. I absolutely love photography. And I actually love the people. I love you. Obviously, you know I like to talk. You know I like to interact with you in chat. I'm the same way in real life. For those of you that met me, and I think most of you are gone now out of chat, but for those of you who met me in real life, this is exactly how I am. <clears throat> okay. Might be scary to know that. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. Um, I am thinking, Vikram, I don't think I answered your question about the golden ratio. You are getting into the golden ratio when it comes to group photography. For me, it doesn't apply. Um, you know, if you... Like if you look here with this photo, and this was uh, shot by Gareth, right? I mean, double, yep, Gareth. <clears throat> um, the negative space that we have to the positive space, we've got the head in the middle, but um, we've got the majority of the subject is, is down here in the bottom. So setting your shot up, I would not think about the golden ratio. Now here, going thirds, this is absolutely perfect. Doing a straight on, and you know what? I'm gonna go, sorry, Gareth, I'm going to my edit. I dig this edit. I think this edit turned out good. Um, having somebody shoot straight on like this as a headshot works really well. Um, having it framed right in the middle, but the negative space that you have here is absolutely wonderful. And you are using the rule of thirds. So if I hit D for develop, <clears throat> we're gonna just open up the crop tool. I'm gonna hit O for overlay and go to that. Very close, very close. We've got our eyes and also our lips, the two most important subject matters of this photo almost on those lines. If I wanted to go in and crop this in a little bit more to get that, and let's say even to the point of saying, we're gonna, we're gonna, actually I'd have to take it out. I'm not gonna get it. But if we say do something like this, where it's almost more dead center, we've got our lips to the eyes, right there let's go ahead hit okay now the before okay before and after doesn't do the the edit the crop so that's my my bad but the idea of using maybe rule of thirds here is good but yeah i don't know if that answers your question vikram or not uh photography's are a combination of light science, art, communication, and design. That's why a lot of engineers are very good photographers. <clears throat> um, speaking of Vikram, we're gonna start with Vikram's work. I have not looked at any of these yet, and I think, I hope, what are these? Um, oh. I don't want to search for people. I hit I hit P instead of uh, I. 
Okay, these are CR2s. So these are raw files. All right, just looking at what we've got. <clears throat> and that is way too zoomed. Okay, holding down the command key. Cannon shooter, the correct choice, obviously. <sighs> um, okay, so <clears throat> since this is raw, we've got a lot of good detail going on. We've got everything. Wait, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. These are tombs, Vikram says. All right. Let's take a look at these first. I like that. I like that. I love shooting doorways like this, Vikram. Um, alleyways. I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'm having, is that, okay, that's it. Um, okay, we are talking edits here. So, editing, oh, sorry, why am I pressing I? What do we want? What do you want, Oliver? Do you want... Uh, Vikram shot this at 1 60th of a second F9 ISO 100 with a 22 at 22 millimeters. Is that what you want? We cannon shooters can easily pivot into a job at the circus. That's it. Now we can see the camera lens F stop. Okay. Well, I'm going to get rid of it now. <clears throat> um, all right. I love shooting this. I love shooting this style. The one problem that I have is this door. We've got everything going on, going through here. And I think we can try a different different couple things. I wanna uh, right click. We're gonna do this quick. Um, oh yeah, good point. We're gonna make a virtual copy. Uh, Oliver says, if you squint, you can also see the ISO and what was shoot shot up here underneath the histogram. So that's all visible right there. Um, I'm gonna use the virtual copy. I'm gonna hit uh, D for develop and we're gonna go into our crop mode. Uh, one of the things that I am thinking about is eliminating this first door entirely. I'm going to possibly, possibly, um, lose some information. Oh, let's see what we've got here. Let me go in. Let's go two to three. Okay, that could be an issue. Um, you know what, let's go ahead. We're gonna reset that first. Let's go into transform before we crop. I'm just, I'm thinking this through because what I want is this section here as it's falling through. I want to eliminate the door that's over here. So, Let's make sure that that is straight. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to use this line as our horizon and next to it, we're gonna grab these as our verticals. We're gonna try to get everything straight. There we go. Uh, let's put that back. And if anybody has any questions when it comes to Lightroom Classic um, or photography, 
put, put the questions in chat. We actually have the photographer in the Behance chat. So now we're gonna go in, let's lock this ratio. Let's bring this in. I dig, oh. We're gonna lose those hooks. I think I'm okay with that. Um, I am checking where we are going. Just trying to get as much as the flooring as we can. Let's see how that looks. Mmm, not liking it. Uh, when you're doing something like this, you have to take in consideration, this was shot F9 and your depth of field. But uh, let's go ahead and let's just keep going with this right now. Um, we're going to crop it a little bit more. I'm not liking that side. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not talking much. I am really focused right now. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I like what we've got going. It's still slightly off. Let's go ahead, let's bump this over. That is better. Okay, so we have got a nice frame. Um, making sure, let's go ahead, take care of our lens corrections. And let's just turn that off right now. Um, what do, what? Do, okay. <clears throat> oh, okay, Bruce, I get you. I get you. Um, jumping into the basics, let's go ahead and let's try the auto, see what we've got going on. Um, that is not bad, except it's too much. It's just too much. Let's go Command Z. First off, let's go ahead. We're going to grab the eyedropper tool right there. We're going to see what we've got for a white balance. Now I'm looking for something that's around 18% gray and you can look up here in the in the navigation to see the color change. You can see it's really yellow right now. Um, if I come down here and I can click on that and we can get it cool it down a little bit and I'm actually okay with that. What about the wall at the end of the hall? It looks like it's supposed to be white. <clears throat> It's quite blue now. Let's go ahead and try it, Oliver. What's a lens correction? Lydia, absolutely good question. Uh, coming up here to the top, Lydia is asking what lens correction is. So first off, the chromatic aberration. When light is being bent around certain objects in a certain way, um, you will get a purple halo around the subject. It doesn't always happen, but that is actually the chromatic aberration and it will remove those purple tints. Uh, Lightroom Classic will move, remove them automatically. You can jump in here to manual and you can actually go in and defringe the chromatic aberration right here. And you can choose it if you're not getting the correct purple or the correct hues. So um, I get that a lot with tree branches against the sky. Yeah, uh, what? There was a stream I do not remember the gentleman's name. He's he's a new streamer on Behance and he was taking product photography and the bottle that he was uh, photographed and he was trying to cut out, it was a glass vial. 
it had a horrible chromatic aberration going on and he didn't know how to fix it so i was trying to tell him and he just well, he wasn't getting it uh webston's saying any high contrast area can get chromatic aberration on cheaper lenses isn't it an effect for cheaper lenses too yep um i'm so glad people identified chromatic aberration it's not just me seeing things devlin it could be <laughs> It's, you know, it's not, it's, you get it a lot with cheaper lenses. Yes, it's more common, but you're still even more export more expensive lenses. You're still getting it simply because of the refraction of light as it wraps around that edge of a subject. So, um, that's what it is. So hopefully that answers your question and not just cheaper lenses, wider angle lens, le wider angle makes it worse. My 100 millimeter L doesn't do it. My 35 millimeter L does it quite a bit. Neither of them is cheap. Oh, Devlin. Um, do, 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 do. Oliver was saying earlier that this back wall needs to be brighter. This is one of the things that you want to think about when you're shooting these type of alleyways and hallways is you are drawing the eye down. Now, normally within this situation, we are going to give this a much brighter wall than what it is um, due to the fact we want to have our eye drawn to it. Nothing else in this photo is going to be brighter. So we're gonna have the highest contrast and the brightest point of this photo is gonna be that center. So that's what we're going to do. I wasn't saying it needs to be, I was just suggesting it as a point for white balance because it looks like it should be white. But no, Oliver, we are trying to draw the eye in. Now, here's the question. If I, let's go back out, I'm gonna hit G. <clears throat> If you are taking this photo and you are saying these archways are the subject, okay? You are still trying to draw the eye to this point, but you are gonna make these archways stand out more. Now, the only reason, and this is, this is Vikram, should have seen this dark doorway Maybe there's another one at the very next pillar or and the next and the next and it's on every single one. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, so that's why I'm getting rid of it. Uh, Lydia says, I'm not sure, but I've got some photos taken with a macro lens on the phone that got those. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. With a cheap phone. <clears throat> All right, so we've, I don't know if I like that though. It's, I mean, in reality, it probably is this color. That's too blue. What, okay, I. this is something I need to explain. I apologize, everybody. Um, with the white balance, I'm using the white balance picker. And as you can see, you have the RGB values, the percentages right there, the 23.8 red, green, and blue. What I am looking for is finding a neutral color, which I am trying to find a 18% gray for photographers, um, or a medium gray. I'll use that terminology or a pure white or a pure black. So I am trying to get these RGB percentages as close as possible together. And that's the target, well, as it says, target neutral. So that's why I'm looking for those type of colors. Um, so let me zoom back out and grab this again. Duplicate image, cut it down the middle, flip horizontally, move right. Voila, everything is nice and perfect. While not real, but who cares? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, you have to remember, 
Th this stream is how I would edit your photos. So everybody can have a suggestion and that's absolutely wonderful. I think that's it. No, actually, it's a great idea. It's it's an absolutely great idea to do that because the only issue with looking at this photo is you would be having light sources from both sides. Um, you would have to clone out the center rings. You'd have to clone out and clean the floor. Yeah. I mean, it would actually be a really cool effect to do that because it would be as if you're walking through an, an outdoor tunnel. So that's definitely a possibility. All right, let's get this going. Um, we're going to go ahead, take our highlights down. You could use it to explore how to balance your picture through onion skin skinning. Content aware fill might work faster than cleaning floors. Uh, Megan, hello. So the interesting thing in a stream yesterday, we were talking about, and I am not bringing this subject up. We are not discussing it here today, but <clears throat> um, who was it that was doing that on the videos, cloning bits from one side to the other to create a completely different scene? It was me. I, I was doing that with faces. I was doing, um, we were doing a whole stream on faces and I was taking, um, Taking faces, cloning them, putting them together, and making new new faces. Uh, making making a music video. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I got gotcha. you. I remember that. Um, dang, I I I don't know his name, but yes, I remember that absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Now, this is one of the things that I hope, I hope, people that watch photography, editing streams, Lightroom streams, start to realize that all of this stuff that we're doing is absolutely non-destructive. So we can get in and play. We could go in and just make this freaking wild beyond belief. And I know it has absolutely no effect whatsoever on what we're doing. I mean, we can do some crazy things. That's actually pretty cool. Um, it's non-destructive. So if I hold down the option key, you will see right now, it says reset right there. So I'm able to go from adjust to reset. I can reset that back. Um, that's some kind of pop-up. Yeah. So less yesterday, Jeff was talking on his stream. He was talking about the idea of... Uh, he was talking about having his... Um, being scared of Lightroom and not really knowing what he was doing in it. And it was a little disappointing because one of, Rupert Haller, Haller, one of the things that I would love, I'll share the stream link with him. Oh, you do you know him? Oh, with Jeff, with Jeff. Well, no, a Jack. Actually, I was hoping Jeff was going to come in, and Jeff didn't. Um, 
Yeah, let me finish. Let me finish this up really quick. We're going to jump into the masks and we're just going to try to get this to pop to bring it in. So I'm going to come up here to range. Um, we are going to go to a luminance range. We're going to click on that. It automatically gives us an eyedropper and I'm going to click right there. Now, with that eyedropper, here is our luminance range. And so it's showing in blue because the overlay, as you can see here, is blue, um, what it is choosing. So let's go ahead. We're going to take this down. Let's move this over a bit. And what I am looking at is I am really trying to get this back part. That is what I am going for. And so we're going to add all of this. Right there. I like that. Uh, next off, we're going to come up here and we're going to go subtract. I'm going to hit subtract. I'm going to hit brush and we're going to make our brush way bigger. And you can see in the middle of our brush, it says negative. So it's subtracting. I do not want to affect that centerpiece. That is all I want down there is those luminance values. I, so making my brush smaller, just painting all this away. And I'm at 100, yup. So we are good to go. And getting rid of all of this. And I actually may add some of this back in. I may not, I don't know yet. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to bring up the exposure. We're gonna bring up our whites. And we're gonna bring up our shadows. Just like that. So you can see the before and after looking at the center, that to that, just a little bit more pop is gonna help bring the eye in. Um, we are done there. Let's get out of the masks. Next off, we're gonna go into our effect. We are gonna add a little bit of grain, maybe about eight, and we're gonna add a vignette and bringing that in like that holding down the option key and moving the highlights. You can see the black, it makes it super dark so you can see what you're working on. And moving it over, there's no highlights there, so that is good. We are just gonna bring that in. So, where we started from was that. Where we ended was that. It's a little bit more dreamy, it's softer, there's more grittiness to it. It's bringing out some of the texture within the walls um, and it's bringing your eye to the back. So just trying to add some depth. Now, Vikram is saying the sun rays. I love it when you're shooting an alleyway um, or a walkway or a pathway like this and there's doors or windows opening and you have strong light coming in absolutely love that and i i try to bring out that contrast and turn it into black and white um i enjoy those when you have those high contrast doing black and whites uh all right so for me that is actually done um i dig that i want to show something really fast here um We're going to do Sandrine's. I know Sandrine is gone. Not adding a lens flare. It's possible. Okay, hitting G, I'm going to hit Command E, and we're going to bring this into Photoshop. Now, this is why I was hoping Jeff was going to be here today. Suva Art, hello. Welcome in. How long? Have, oh my God, I've been streaming for two hours and I've done one photo. Today has been tangent town for sure. All right, let's jump over into Photoshop, maybe. There we go. <clears throat> um, we're gonna do something crazy. All right, I'll really fast. I just wanna show this because it's, 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 this is important for anybody that is illustrating in Photoshop. Um, 
To be fair, it took you an hour and a half to start editing people's photos. I, I True. But that's what I do here. I answer questions. I try to help. I'm just trying to help. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to do something a little crazy here just so we can see the difference. Let's add a gradient map to this really fast. Um, I know you can't see, but that's fine. Let's grab this gradient. How would you export the photo for web or printing? Lydia, remind me so I don't forget that, and I will show that next. Um, let's go into, some, that's crazy. You know what, let's, let's actually go crazy. Let's go with the noise. Noise, noise. Okay, so uh, you have two, and a lot of people may not know this. Uh, got Linda, have a great day, take care. Uh, normally, this is on solid. So all of these up here, these are your solid gradients, right? If you scroll down, now down here, we start getting into um, <clears throat> our noise gradients. So if I click onto here, onto here, you can see what we've got going on for this funky. Now, let's randomize this. So we go to type and we want to go to noise, not solid. So we're on noise. Our roughness doesn't matter right now, but down here at the bottom, you can randomize. So we go in and we start randomizing and Adobe is just grabbing colors, just whatever. Oh, okay, that's a keeper, <laughs> that's a keeper. That's probably burning some people's screens, um, but we're gonna say okay. Uh, at this point, if you want, you can go in and you can check out some of the blending modes that you would get. Um, if you wanna soften it down, maybe you don't. Maybe that's that's kind of cool. Um, let's see what we get for difference. Getting into the negative, subtract, no, divide. Ooh, ooh, divide was looking good. Um, color, not bad. I think divide, we're gonna go with divide. All right, <clears throat> so it doesn't matter how many layers you have here. If you are illustrating, if you're compositing, if you're making anything at all in Photoshop, and there are a lot of people, Jeff was one of them last night, that would then go and use Lightroom. Now, I am not saying this workflow is wrong, okay? taking whatever it is you've made and using Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to just make it pop a little bit more is wonderful. So <clears throat> I want to be able to show that. Um, how did you how did you create this color in Photoshop? Uh, all right, we will show you again. Jeff, Jeff is here. Okay. <clears throat> Jeff, perfect timing, great stream last night. Right now, right now, we are doing your stream that we were talking about, okay? So Jeff, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited. Um, let me jump back. All right, uh, test ring, hello by the way, is asking how I got this color. First off, this is a image taken by Sandrine. I, um, brought it into, edited it in Lightroom Classic, brought it into Photoshop. Now we're into Photoshop. As you can see, I'm adding a gradient map. So if I jump onto this and let's open up our gradient map, you can see, let's boom right here, our editor. Um, what I've done is I have switched it to noise. Normally it would be on solid, okay? So a solid gradient, something like this. That's not bad. But I came down here to type and I switched it from solid to noise. And then I came down here and hit the randomize button. You can be, ooh, that's not bad. You can be very specific with these, but um, 
right there, I dig that. I'm digging that one. So you can just click on it and Adobe Sensei, I don't know if it's Sensei, probably not, is just randomizing the colors and here is the gradient that it is making. You can see it right there. And so that's all we've done. I'm gonna hit okay. Oh, we're still on divide. So normal, that's what it looks like. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna go back to finding a blend mode I like. Um, ooh, exclusion, that's nice. Yeah, let's go exclusion, that's funky. I'm digging that. All right, <clears throat> now, to get this started in Photoshop, this is why I am wanting to show this. First off, this is on a Mac. So you wanna to go to your preferences. So we're gonna go into uh, Photoshop. Where the heck, setting, my God, I was looking for preferences. Photoshop settings and then general, all right? Very important to do it this way. If you are trying to get your workflow in to stay in Photoshop and not take it over into Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, next off, within your preferences, you've got preset syncing. You wanna sync up your presets from Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, into Adobe Camera Raw. So click that, and then you would have to restart Photoshop, all right? So we've got that done. Next off, I want to make a new layer. I don't wanna do just do work in Camera Raw on one layer. So very important, I'm gonna do the shortcut key. And this is for combining visible layers. All right, I'm gonna say it again. Combining visible layers. So if I come in here, let's go on top and make a new layer. And I'm just gonna go option delete. We're gonna fill it with that blue. Oh God, no, that's horrible. Actually, no, let's try it. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm digging it. Okay. Oh, saturation. That's good. Okay. We're, we're okay. Turning that, turning that off, going to our gradient map layer. So the layer is there, but it's turned off. Command option shift E command option shift E that will combine, as you can see in my layers panel, it combined the visible layers into one layer. I still have all my other layers. Here's my other layers. They're still there. So this is how to work non-destructively, all right? So I can actually do this. I've got one, everything is on one layer I'm, and it didn't take our blue layer. Our blue layer is still there, but let's just get rid of that for the heck of it. I'm gonna turn this into a smart object and I've got this set up as a shortcut key, but you know, I'm streaming, I'll do it this way. We're gonna convert this to a smart object. I love smart objects. I always use them, um, love them. Next off, we are going to come up here to the top and we are gonna go to filter, come down. Now mine are colored, which if anybody has questions about coloring your menu, I'm happy to show it, but camera raw filter okay we're going to click on that this dialog box opens up here is our layer let me close everything down and oh my goodness this looks like lightroom penny hello this is the same engine as lightroom so You've got Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop, and also Bridge. And the team, the Adobe Camera Raw team, is actually working to make it look the same as Lightroom. So this is just, this is absolutely wonderful. If you know Lightroom, you can jump into Camera Raw, no problem whatsoever. Now, here's the question. We want to go to our presets. Um, now I'm having <clears throat> brain fart right here. This button here, that is our presets. And as you can see here, all my presets are linked here from my Lightroom. Okay. I've got the Flurn, 
Let's go into user presets. Here are all my user presets. Jumping back into Lightroom Classic, we are going to jump into this photo, hitting D for develop. Here's my user presets up above my head. We've got the 105 millimeter. We have a black and white high contrast butterfly. Okay, we're gonna go back into Photoshop. We are in Adobe Camera Raw. Here are my filters, 105 millimeter macro butterfly. So they're there, they are there. I, if I am using presets on a specific image for a specific image, I don't have to leave Photoshop. I can stay here. I can jump in here. I can make it pop however it is I want. Let's check out, um, that is cool, blackened. I'm digging that. Ooh, I'm digging that. Pixely Shelby, that was a free, um, free one I got. We're gonna go with that. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of the presets. Also, oh, very important, just like in Lightroom Classic up here, you have the amount slider. So I can go less or I can go even more if I really wanna go a bit crazy. I'm okay with that. Next off, we're gonna come up here to the basic edit panel. We click on that. We go into our basic panel and you can see all the changes that were done here. With that preset, everything was done. Uh, FYI, that preset syncing setting is for syncing your brushes, patterns, etc., to the cloud and do other devices. It doesn't sync Adobe Camera Raw Lightroom Classic presets. They just automatically appear in both. <sighs> I want to boot my mod. <laughs> Alessandra, hello. Um, <clears throat> I thought it did. Anyway, who cares? Who cares? If you didn't know about the auto syncing, you know about it now. God, Oliver is a fun spoiler. Jeff, are you still here? Because this is the quietest I've ever heard you. I'm waiting, waiting. Did Jeff? Jeff actually just came in and left. Let's go ahead, we're gonna hit okay. Now it's going to apply. Nah, that setting is the reason why I end up with multiple folders in my brushes with identical brushes in. Well, I knew, I, okay, very important. Let me show you this. The reason that I made it a smart object, let me toggle this open right there. I'm gonna hit that arrow. And you can see smart filter camera raw. So I can actually turn it off and turn it on, let it re-render. Bam. If, I, if I'm not liking that effect, I can hit B for a brush. I can make this brush larger. Hitting D for the default colors, X to get my black. Let's go with a soft round big brush. We're gonna turn our blend mode into dissolve that is our brush blend mode and let's go ahead and just paint across and zooming oh <clears throat> like look at the texture i'm way zoomed in now man zero look at this texture that it just added gosh come on sean I'm hitting the wrong buttons. My fault entirely. Um, look at that texture that that is adding. You know, over here, it's perfectly clean, except for with the gradient, the banding. But now the fact that I brushed that away, that texture is just amazing. So we could do it again down here. And it just brings a little bit of that blue out. And if you even wanna go a step further, you can actually turn these layers back on and do a blend mode on the layer so we can actually go even further so i'm using a blend mode on the on the mask i'm using a blend mode on the smart layer and i did a preset in adobe camera raw 
So you can see how crazy it is that you want to go. Ooh, I'm digging that. <clears throat> okay, Vikram, take care. Do do love to. I think you said you're good, Sean. I couldn't. Yeah, I'm good. Um, Anki, have take care. I I'm disappointed now. I am disappointed. Um, Jeff shows up, said hello, and then left. <sighs> Just hi, bye. Popped in to say hi. I do all this work for him. And he leaves. <laughs> oh, he's going to hear about it. <clears throat> Where did you go, Jeff? Uh, Kahala, Ed, hello. Welcome in. Good to see you. Okay. I think we're jumping over into Lightroom Classic. Uh, I am not going to save this. I like Sandrine's original so let's close that we're not going to save it let's jump back into lightroom classic uh hitting g for grid and what time do we've got, we got three o'clock what i let me check the uh behance schedule i don't know what is going on <laughs> penny said oh yeah penny said jeff was so shocked by the photo magic he passed out Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna, he's gonna hear about this. All right, Annika is up at 5.30 my time. <clears throat> All right, I've got a question for you in chat. Um, let's take a break. I, I'm gonna go through some things because we have some new people here. And um, then I will ask if you want me to edit another photo um, or do you want to call it a day? So that's that's what we're going to do really quick. Uh, jumping over here, we are done talking about who's busted. Who's busted? Jump over the Discord. <clears throat> Bruce is bothering me. Bruce, I'm streaming, man. I'm streaming. Okay. Uh, for those of you that do not know, first off, I am Sean Kozel. I'm a photographer. I'm based in Germany. If you're watching this on Behance, oh gosh. Okay. Messed that up. Um, if you're watching it on Behance, click on my icon that's up that way and it'll take you to my Behance page. If you like what I do, feel free to, to subscribe to me. This is stream 210, I believe, on Behance. This is stream maybe seven or eight on Twitch and YouTube. If you're watching this on Twitch or YouTube, there is a link to my uh, link tree within the stream itself. Go ahead and click on that and this will show you everywhere I'm at within the interwebs. If you scroll down to the bottom, it will say join my Discord. If you're watching this on Behance, scroll down below and it says join my Discord. If you are on my if you are on my Behance page and you scroll down, it says, guess what? Join my Discord. This, this is for community projects, community artwork. With on my Discord, I've got a couple links for you. First off, your photos to edit. That is just like what we're doing today, whereas you're sending me your unedited photos and I'm showing you how I would edit them. So you get to show, I get to show off your work and boom. I always think the name of your town says Ostrich Winkel. Ostrich Winkel, no. No, not ostrich. Ostrich winkel. It should be the O with the umlauds, the two dots above it, um, but it's not, so it says O-E. Ostrich. Ostrich winkel. Um, <clears throat> so, your photos to edit. Share your photos with me. Let me edit them. Also, I've got our community artwork and project feedback. This is where you share your artwork. Um... Like Jennifer shared a photo of a squirrel. Squirrel! Squirrel! I did not show that off. So Jennifer, thank you for sharing that with us. 
That's a fun photo. I like that. I like it. Squirrel. Uh, hi, Sean. Community just sharing a recent painting. Ooh. Yeah. That's amazing, Bruce. I don't know if Bruce is still here, if he came and gone, but wow, that is some, that is got some great depth. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's from Maddie's stream. Uh, next off, we have project feedback. So if you have projects that you wanna share with me and I'll share with the community, that's where you put it. If you have shops, you can put your shop link, like me, my new Redbubble. Now, coming up, technically it's not started, but we have a challenge. And up above my head, we've got a challenge group and we have the creative circus. So clicking on the creative circus, coming up here, you can see what I've got going is it is a creative circus community challenge. Uh, I really, I guess it started, I don't know. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> I've done a brainstorming stream with chat to get some ideas for the brief. So this is the brief. This is describing what it's going to be. And I do have a giveaway at least one uh, at some point when we are gonna end this. But if you are interested in joining this creative challenge, this is where you do. You join my Discord. We've got a series of briefs that you can use or you don't have to use it. It's just as long as the theme is circus. We are using the hashtag creative circus spelled just like that. Two Ks. Uh, begun the creative circus has. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> you can use your socials like what Gareth did, or you can actually post your work like what Mafu did right here. So that is what I wanted to make sure to announce um, for all the people that are new here. So this is going to be going on for a while. If you're looking for a new community challenge, that's what's happening. All right, I'm gonna leave that up for a second if anybody wants to screenshot it. Three, two, one. You thought something was gonna happen at one. <clears throat> it did, I took a drink. All right, let's jump into, not Photoshop, let's jump into Lightroom Classic. Ah, red bobble, penny, shame on you. Shame on you. Um, let's see. So question for you, chat. I've been live for two hours and 30 minutes. If you would like, I can edit one more photo um, and call it a day. Oliver says edit. <laughs> okay. Went to screenshot it, turn off the phone by accident. <laughs> <clears throat> Devlin says edit. General says do it. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see here. Um, we did one of Vikram. Let's do one of Lydia's. Lydia, are you still here? And this is very interesting. Um, let me show this. Wait, I just saw something. Okay, Lydia's. We're going to work on Lydia's. <clears throat> so Lydia initially was saying she's got some weird sizes. And let's get into here. So this is a JPEG. All right. So Lydia sent me this. <clears throat> and the size is 3840. Just, just remember the 3840. This is a JPEG. If we go to the next one, which is a DNG, it's 2000 pixels. Very strange. It was shot with a Google Pixel. 
but it's very strange the fact that the sizes are different. Now, I understand the different look between that one and that one because the JPEG has been processed. It's using um, the camera, actually has a processor in it, and it does an auto process to it. So that's why the JPEG looks better. The RAW <clears throat> is smaller, but it's supposed to have more info. Just weird. I, I, I have, I've never seen it before because I don't use a camera phone. Um, and she was asking why that is. And I don't have a clue at all. So, um, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. But. <clears throat> Let's see what we've got here. Like, you can really see it here. Like, well, but isn't it supposed to be the same photo, Lydia? Not going to read it, Oliver. Not going to read it. This is just a lens correction. Like if, if I hit D for develop, uh, let's go lens correction, enable lens correction. Like it's uh, pixel three. I mean, it's, yeah, still a little bit out. Meh. Okay, let's get going. So we've got... Ooh. That, that's not Lydia's. That's Robert's, I believe. I think I want to work with this one. I am, I am digging this a lot. I am liking the lighting. I like the shadows. Um couple different things it just digitally zoomed in oh okay i got you apparently the same happens with dji's dngs are smaller than jpegs in actual pixels now okay i understand if it's a digital zoom then you would have less pixels um for those of you that do not know like what a digital zoom is uh, let me hit G for grid. We're going to make a virtual copy of this. Uh, <clears throat> wow, it is smaller in pixels. I've never heard that before, General. Like, I'm not I'm not saying you're lying. I'm just saying I've, I've actually never heard that before. So it's news to me. All right, um, we're going to hit D for develop. We're going to go into the crop tool. So what would happen? Oh, we have an explanation possibly. Oliver says, is the JPEG interpolated to a higher MP than actual sensor? I had a bridge camera that used to do that, so the RAWs were half the size of the JPEGs. Wow. I don't know. That's a good question. General says I just saw that searching on the web. All right. That's why I'm not sure if it is worth keeping a DNG in mobile camera. <sighs> the, okay. Big head mode here. This, it, I, I am going to say that it's completely up to your preference, Lydia. And this is for everybody. Saying, do you keep the DNG? I love to edit. Okay? The only option is raw photo. Well, <clears throat> I love to edit. 
So I want to start out with a raw image. I do not want it processed at all. So not only is it processed normally for like my camera, so this normally a processed uh, compressed image is a JPEG. And so, okay, it'll save a JPEG and a DNG for me, gotcha. Um, if you are not into editing and you're taking photos and you like the JPEGs or you want to do light editing, not heavy ed editing, just light editing, um, you know, just make it pop a little bit more, add a little vibrance, bring up maybe exposure or shadows, bring down shadows, you know, just little light, just little editing. Um, a JPEG might just be enough for you. It might say, okay, this is fine. I don't need the J, the DNG or the raw file because I don't want to do the heavy editing. Now I'm talking about phones, please. I am talking about phones. Um, wow, Kara. Um, no, Annika, I had to read that first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> hold on. Oh, okay. Jeez. All right. Now that I got her name up, I can actually boot her. So let me come over here. Hmm, that's... Oh no, I did this again. <laughs> Whoops. <clears throat> Hold on, everybody. I have something to fix here really quick. I, um... Doing a little bit of housekeeping. Okay, I think I'm still live. No, I was, I, uh, uh, that's funny. Okay. <clears throat> so Lydia, I, I apologize, Lydia. Sorry for that. Some people are just absolutely rude and, uh, uh spam our chat so Lydia I think it's completely up to you or anybody else if you're using your if you're using your phone uh, depending upon what your output once you want it to be um, where you're gonna use it what are you gonna do with it I think that's what it depends if you're going to uh, <clears throat> if you're gonna keep the DNG or delete it General says, found this. If you zoom in with the camera, your JPEGs will have more pixels than your DNGs for Pixel 3. That just doesn't... That, is it... Is it... Making? I mean... I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Because what, what I was going to show, if you come here and you're like, okay... I want to digitally zoom. You know, you, this is your photo. At least this is with my old mirrorless cameras, um, my old Panasonic mirrorless. This is the way digital cropping or digital zooming works is you've got the full size image, right? You can see the outside is gray. The inside part with the, with the grid, if I hit O, Let's make it so it's more visible. There we go. <clears throat> that is a digital zoom. So if you take this photo, it's taking all of those pixels and eliminating them um, from around the edge. And then you're left with whatever's on the inside. Um, 
For JPEGs, the Pixel 3 zooms in with a combination of Google's own RAISR, AI technology, and the more traditional Lanzo's algorithm. But for RAW, you have to do the digital zoom yourself. Yeah, so they're using AI inter interpolation to make the JPEG appear hard, higher res. So when you zoom, the raw images throws away the extra pixels. Yep. Okay, let's take this another a step forward here. If you let, let me hit G for grid. We're gonna jump out of here. Um, let's say you can see right now this photo right here. This has, it's 2,200 pixels wide. Let's say you need more pixels, okay? You're not happy with the size that you're getting from your phone, from your camera, whatever, whatever, and you want more. Let's take this a different way. Hitting G for grid. I cropped the heck out of this photo. 4,000 by 6,000, all right? We're gonna jump over here. It went from four, from 6,000 long to 2,000. I deleted 4,000, actually a lot more, but just in the height, 4,000 pixels, all right? I deleted it. It's, it, they're still there because it's Lightroom Classic. But with this image right now, that's what we've got going. So I'm like, okay, I got what I wanted, right? I made the crop that I want, but I it's just, just not enough pixels here. What do you do, Sean? Let me show you. So let me come back here. You can see 1300 by 2000. If I right click on the image, Control Z. <laughs> Oliver nails it. Enhance, enhance, enhance. You will see right here, there's a thing called enhance. Let's try it. Ooh, look at this preview. Super resolution doubles the image resolution ideal for large displays and prints. We're gonna not create a stack. No, let's create a stack. I'll, we'll talk about stacks. And let's go ahead and enhance. If you do it three times, you can get perfect letters on number plates. <laughs> was just blurred dot in the original photos. Um, you can see it working up here in the taskbar, and it's done. Terry White, I think he he had an old image that he scanned, and it was a small image, I think. And I think he said he did it four times. Um, Lydia says I noticed this before, so left often do too much zooming now. Even the JPEGs don't get a clear image when using digital zooming. Yeah, I do not like digital zooming. Um, as you can see up here in the title, it actually says enhanced. Now it went from 2000 or it went from 1300 by 2000 to 2700 by 40 by 4000. So it's doubled the pixels in height and width. It is using Adobe Sensei to actually create these pixels. So as you can see, let's let's see what we got here. G for grid. We've got our stack right there. It says two, right? So let's go ahead, click on that. And we've got the raw file and we have the enhanced file, which is now a DNG. It is no longer a CR2 but is, it is still a raw file. So let's see the quality we got. Did you see that? I've, I've left, left the name up here so you can see it. 
okay? Let's zoom in on something. I think I added too much grain there. <laughs> this is amazing. Like I can't I can't see the difference. I don't expect you to see because I know there's some compression going on when you live stream, but Mr. Voss is back in chat, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, Jeff. We're I, I'm going to have you watch this replay, okay? Um, I am not going to go back. We're going to be finishing it up soon, but uh, you're going to want to watch the replay. And if you have any questions, well, okay. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't worry. But I just want to show this really quick, really quick. Uh, Enhance is surprisingly good, way better than anything similar I've used before. And it's also in a camera raw. No, 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 it's okay. It's all right. Let me grab Sandrine's uh, photo again. I'm going to go Command E. And this is all, this is all I want to show you, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> so, very important. Let's go with a solid color. That's fine. So, you've got all of your layers, right? We're going to turn this, take this down to... Let's go hue. All right, you've got tons and tons of layers. <clears throat> Very important. First thing you do, Command, Option, Shift, E. You make a combination of your uh, visible layers. We're going to turn that into a smart object. I know you had to know how to do that. Next off, here's the important thing. You're going to go up here to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. We go into Camera Raw Filter. Let me go into our presets. Presets are right there. Whoops, let me close this down. And this looks just like Lightroom. You've got presets right there. Click on your presets. All of your presets from Lightroom and Lightroom Classic are here. So if I want to change that up, put that preset on it, I hit OK. Jeff's on the phone again, everybody. <clears throat> All right, now, as you can see, I have my original photo. There's the original photo. There's the color, color fill, and there's the new camera raw that I've got. If I open this up, I have my smart filter and my camera raw filter, and I also have a mask. So if I hit B for brush, it's clicking on the mask, of course. Uh, going up, I'm still in dissolve, I can sit here and paint away that effect any place I want. Um, hopefully, Jeff, that helps you. This process is not, or this idea, just so you know, Jeff, is not to change your workflow. I don't, that's not why I'm showing you this. It is trying to keep you in Photoshop to make it a little quicker. That's the only reason I wanted to show you this. I'm not questioning anything else because your work is amazing. Um, but I think that can help you. So hopefully it does. <clears throat> and again, I love the fact that we do this as a community. Um, all right, we're going to jump into here. I'm okay with this size. Lydia, I'm going to work on this. There's a couple different things that I want to do. First off, let's grab the first one. Um, Jeff says that is awesome because I don't want to leave Photoshop. Lightroom can be slow and disruptive. You don't need to. Adobe Camera Raw ACR is the same. It's the same engine as Lightroom, as Lightroom Classic. So you never have to leave. <clears throat> well, yes, you do. You, you can't stay here, but you can you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. God, I screwed that up. <clears throat> All right. Um, Lydia, have a great day. 
Fun fact, when you create in Lightroom, when you create presets in Lightroom Classic, the files are actually created under ACR in the file system. That's how closely tied they are. I did not know that. Um, which one am I on now? I forgot. On the first one. All right. There's two different things I want to do here. We're going to knock this out in about hopefully 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to hit D for develop. First thing, we're going to enable uh, the profile correction. It's already done. And it even knows right here. You can see it says a Pixel 3 rear camera. So it's got all that information. We're going to remove any chromatic aberration, which is probably going to be coming up through here. Um, and I removed it, so it looks good. <clears throat> Next off, let's go into our transform. I do not need to transform this. We are talking about nature going into our basics. I want to give this a profile. So we are going to click on the profile and let's go into landscapes. Got to make tortilla for me and my dad. <clears throat> Vikram, make it three. I want one. That sounds awesome. My wife is out of town. I haven't eaten in like three days. I don't know how to do anything. <clears throat> I want to go black and white. Make enough for the whole class, please. So I'm going to come up here. We're going to hit black and white. We now it switched over to uh, uh, monochrome, which is perfect. Let's open that up and let's check out some of our presets that or profiles. Excuse me. These are profiles. So these are not presets and I'm taking I like to. Thank you, Vikram. I appreciate it greatly. OK. I'm, I'm, ooh, 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 I'm digging that. That's, God, that's what I was going to go do. <clears throat> All right, that's kind of flat. I like that. I like that. We're going to go black and white 07, and we're going to close that down. Now, really important, I want you to pay attention. This is a profile. So when I was using presets, it was moving all of the sliders. The sliders are all set to zero. So you have presets and you have profiles. So you can really get in and tweak stuff. And remember, you can always tweak uh, the amounts. You've got the amount slider here and even the amount slider over here for the presets up above my head. Um, so if I wanted, if I thought it was not enough, I can crank it up, but <clears throat> I'm okay with that. So let's double click, bring it back to a hundred. Now, what I am looking at is we are bringing down the highlights and I'm watching up in this corner, what we've got going. Uh, let's go ahead, set that back. And if we, Alion, hello, I am good. How are you? I am just bringing this down, looking at bringing some of these details back in. So I'm digging that. Our shadows, now I want to darken our shadows. So I don't want to go too much. Actually, let's not. Let's not play with our shadows. Um, I'm looking up here at the histogram also. I don't want to play with the whites. We want to open up the blacks just a hair. So let's bring that over. And I, I don't like it. Uh, there we go, right there. Now we're going to crank this up. We're going to do a hard, punchy black and white. And then we are going to do a soft soft one afterwards. Okay, we are gonna add a bunch of contrast here, but we're just gonna make an S curve. Now, I may go a bit crazy there. I think I'm digging that. I think I'm digging that. It's a little more than I like, um, but let's jump back into the base. No, let's get back into the tonal curves. Um, 
I'm gonna bring up our blacks just a hair. And I'm looking at this black right there. So before you can see it right there. I mean, that's, that's black. I'm just bringing that up just a hair right there. Okay, I'm digging that. Next off, our color has turned to black and white. It was huge, huge saturation and luminance panel. Now it's black and white, but we have the same control. This is black and white, but the colors are still there. So I can come in, grab this color picker, and let's grab this green. And as I hover, as I move around, you're gonna see certain keys are gonna be highlighted. See how the colors become highlighted? So as I move over, like right there, the green is highlighted. Okay, that's the yellow. So now I can change this up. I can make it brighter and I'm messing with the yellows and the greens. I can go darker, but I wanna go a little bit brighter. I want those greens to pop, to be like high key is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna do that right there. We are, uh, no. Well, I'm, I am on Behance and Twitch and YouTube right now, but these are not my photos. Alian, um, today's stream is how I would edit your photos. Actually, today's stream is teaching posing, but I didn't expect I was gonna be teaching photog posing today. Uh, <clears throat> that was for fairy. But today's stream is how I would edit your photos. So, nope. Uh, next off, we are going to do some vignettes. And this is a good time to show this. I'm gonna add the vignette. So I'm at a negative 22. Now holding down the option key and coming here to the highlight slider, I'm gonna hold down the option key and you can see it turns everything black. And as I bring the highlights over, watch the sky. It's protecting the highlights. That's how you bring the highlights back. You don't wanna to go too far, but you wanna bring the highlights. I don't wanna darken those highlights. I want them to be high key. So we're gonna protect that. Boom, right there. I am digging that. So that's the before. Teaching, posing, teaching, posing, reviewing profiles, tangents, banter, and some photo editing. <laughs> Just a pinch of photo editing today. Just a pinch. <laughs> a lot of teaching, a lot of teaching today. Uh, all right, let's jump into our detail. And I'm, now you came, didn't you ask this question before? And I was like, dude, this is how you do it. Yeah, it was you. Okay, I was just looked at your B hands. What's it matter? Like, I honestly, honest question. Tell me why it matters to be featured. You get more views. That's true. My highest viewed uh, projects are featured. Um... But I, other than that, yeah, it's, it's now I don't care. All right. So first off, I'm going to just do a tiny bit of noise reduction. That may be too much. Let's do it right there. Next off, we're going to bring in a lot of sharpening. Um, Probably about 75. Next off, I'm gonna hold down the option key on the masking. And you remember, white reveals, black conceals. This is just a regular mask. So I wanna sharpen the edges of those leaves. That's what I'm going for. So looking at that, I'm happy with that there. And then let's do it one more time. 
That's a before. That's an after. Okay, that's a black and white. That's what I wanted to do on that one. Next off, we're gonna do the exact same image and I'm gonna take it in a completely different direction. Looking at this photo, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna hit D for develop. We need to start at the top again, do everything the same. We're gonna go into the lens correction. And before I do this, let's see if we've got any chromatic aberration. I am not. Not really seeing any, but that's fine. We're gonna enable the lens correction. Let's go into our basics. Now, we're gonna go with color. So first off, we're gonna go landscape. And I wanna start this a little different than I normally do. We're gonna jump into the tonal curve. And I'm gonna, whoa, get back here. I am gonna go, I'm gonna reset this. Reset that. We are gonna go soft and dreamy with this. I am digging the contact or the contrast that we have going with the sun, but I want it instead of this, this dark or this hard beating down sun that we've got going on, I want it to be soft. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna warm this image up a little bit. We're gonna bring our highlights back down, checking out our details again. We are gonna bring up our shadows. Our whites can be left. Our blacks we've already messed with. Our texture, we're gonna bring that down. And then our clarity, we're gonna bring our clarity down. Vibrance, we can increase the vibrance just a little bit. Now I've already played with the tonal curve, but let's jump into HSL. That's where we're gonna have a little bit of fun. First off, we need to go into our hues. Now, click, clicking on hue, you know I'm not a huge fan of these greens. So let's go ahead and we're gonna warm these up. Actually, let's go teal. No, 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 we're, we wanna go orange. We wanna just go orange right there. And even the before and after from there to there, totally different feel photo. Totally, and I'm digging it, digging it a lot. Next off, we need to go into our color grading. This is where we can have a great deal of fun. Uh, we're gonna start with our shadows. And of course, looking down here at our hue, we're gonna go 215 for our hue. Now holding down the shift key, you can see that that line pops up. That means the hue is staying the same and I can adjust to my heart's content how much saturation between zero and 100. Now there's not a lot of shadows. Normally I would never go this much, but I'm, I'm, I like where that's going. Next off, let's go with our mid-tones. Our mid-tones, we are gonna go, let's go 25. We want these to be quite orange. Holding down the shift again, let's see what we got. We don't have a ton of mid-tones. So let's take that up to about 20, which is good. So we are all highlights. Now with our highlights, we are gonna make this a little bit more yellow, but on the orange side for sure. Holding this shift key down again, you can really see what we've got going there. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. We are going high for that. Next off, we're gonna go with our effect. I do want to go with another vignette. I love me vignettes. Highlights, we want to protect those. So holding down the option key, we're going to protect those highlights just like so. Grain, we do want grain. This needs a lot of grain. So zooming in, checking out the before and after. Vikram, where's my tortilla? Where's my tortilla, Vikram? Welcome back. What's your question, Jeff? <clears throat> okay. D 
Detail, we're gonna go into our detail. First off, I'm gonna go with some noise reduction. And this is just gonna soften things up, which is perfect. You can really kind of see what's going on. Are, are there not tortillas? No, there's tortoises. How about tacos? There you go, Vikram. Jeff, yes, absolutely 100% user presets. Okay, so um, I've used the noise reduction, the luminance. We are adding, due to the fact this is a raw file, you can see right here, it's already set to 40. We're gonna increase it just a little bit, not much here because we're going soft. I'm holding down the option key again and we just wanna hit those edges, so that's good. All right, this is a completely different feel photo. So the before and after. All right, hitting G for grid. I am going to, why not keep more contrast? Vikram, because I did this one. Noise. Um, I wanted to do a black and white high contrast, and then I wanted to go with a very soft contrast. So I'm, I'm, this is one of the things I love doing and why virtual copies are really important to do in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. Um, in Lightroom, it might be called versions, versions in Lightroom, but in Lightroom Classic, you have virtual copies. So I love using that, whereas I've got them right here next to each other, and I can just, two totally different photos. Absolutely. Crushed blacks, even a bit, bit of a lens flare, love it. Yeah, I didn't even have to add that, that's real. <laughs> okay, um, this is for Jeff really quick. I am in grid mode, I'm gonna go Command E. We're gonna take this over and Jeff, if you're listening, and if you've got any more questions, I'm gonna be ending this stream really fast. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So I went into filter, Adobe Camera Raw filter. I used a smart object. Uh, and you black white once. I don't know what that means, Vikram. Okay. <clears throat> right here, Jeff, and anybody else, that is, and can you see it? Ah, uh, come on. This is the button right there for presets. Hovering over it, it should say presets, there we go. Presets or Shift P if you are into shortcut keys. When it comes to Camera Raw, I am not into shortcut keys, um, so no. Uh, going in, yours might look like this, but here are all of your presets. So the very top one for me, user presets. Um, I can toggle that open and just hover. I'll show the black and white again in a second, Vikram. Once we get out of, um, uh, once we get out of, where am I? Adobe Camera Raw. Now, this is, this is interesting. That's funny, my machine does not say user. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it say user? Okay, okay, um, I may have the answer. Let me cancel out of this. I'm gonna leave this. We're gonna go over to the web. Let's open up. Um, is this the app? I hope this is the app. Let's open up Lightroom. 
uh, Adaptive Sky. The first one's Adaptive Sky. Okay, let me check something out, Jeff. And this, if this is not, if this syncs from Lightroom Classic throughout Adobe Camera Raw, but not Lightroom, that's an issue. Like th Adobe should know about this. Um, user presets don't show up until you saved a user preset. Not my presets, but others. Uh, okay, let, let me open. Okay. Let's close the Creative Cloud. And go into presets. That's brushes. Uh, presets are... Oh, I always feel so lost. Let's go G for grid, making sure. All right, let's open that one. Develop. Where do they move presets? Come on. Masking. Oh my gosh, I, dur, 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 everything. This is, this, this is what drives me crazy. All over, I see it all over. Um, <clears throat> like Lightroom Classic, Adobe Camera Raw, they, it, they look the same, but buttons are in different areas. Yours. Okay. I have, this is an issue, Jeff. This is an issue. We have all, I have no presets. Lightroom discovered 50,000 downloadable presets. Um, why? Why are they not talking? Why is Lightroom to get preset now? No, we're we're trying. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm getting that now, Oliver. And this is stupid. I'm sorry. I'm. This is not wise. If you are trying to create a photo ecosystem, whereas you can shoot and edit mobily and also come back sync all, sync all that let's sync it let's sync it but i'm my mind is blown away right now my mind is absolutely blown away jeff i am so sorry this is a huge learning thing for me but jeff i am sorry um that, that this is the way it is. Also, you can't do it the other way. So if you create presets in Lightroom Classic, you can import them into Lightroom. But if you create them in Lightroom, there's no way to get them into. <sighs> okay, all right, hold on here. Is there any syncing preferences? Let's jump into our preferences. Oh my gosh, there's no preferences. Ah, uh, Jack, hello, welcome back. People view, I don't want that. Local storage. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, this is a good thing. Um, everybody, the year is 2022. Make sure to update your copyrights. Wherever you put any type of copyrights, reminder, I updated mine yesterday in Lightroom Classic. So make sure. Um, 2023. Yes. I am I am blown away by this. This whole trying to sync stuff between Lightroom Lightroom Classic is infuriate infuriate infuriating. Jesus. Bobbles. <sighs> Ah, 
how, 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 how. <clears throat> here's here's the funny thing. Okay, I'm the old man. I use Lightroom Classic. I'm not hip and with it like the kids. You know, come on. And so all these people are all about Lightroom, which is fine. I have no issue whatsoever for my workflow and where my comfort is, is Lightroom Classic. I have nothing against Lightroom, okay? But the fact that you cannot have like Adobe Camera on Lightroom Talk, but you can have the old man and Adobe Camera, Camera Raw Talk. Basically, if you've got presets in Lightroom, you have to manually recreate them in Lightroom Classic. Okay, Jeff, question for you. Do you still have the files, your preset files? You are an extremely organized individual. You said that you've purchased or you've gotten these presets from someplace else. Do you have a preset folder where you could take the time and load them up into Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom Classic. Do you still have them? Because it sounds like you're not gonna be able to get them out of Lightroom, which is stupid. Um, this is, this is, we can share everything in all the Adobe universe. I could, I could put a link in chat right now and all of you could open this photo up and edit it in seconds, in seconds. But it's not able to talk. I mean, we don't have libraries in in Lightroom, which is fine. People were saying we should have like, oh, you guys are firing me up today. I'm, I'm just like, really? Uh, basically, if you've got presets in Lightroom, you have to manually recreate them in Lightroom Classic. I mean, at the very least, they could have allowed them to be exported as files so you could import them. It's not fine. I should be able to put stuff from Lightroom Classic straight into my libraries. I understand why you can't, Oliver. Shoot, shoot. Lydia wanted to know about exporting and she's gone. Dang it. <sighs> okay. Um, no, because the, I the issue, I understand why you can't have libraries in the sense it would be, it, it would have to be like a droplet. Whereas if you drag something, I can't even imagine how it, how it would work. You would have to export it to a library. Like you couldn't drag and drop it into a library. Um, you would have to go through the export panel and actually export it to your library. Which thinking about it, that would be pretty cool. Now I'm wondering if I forgot, if I haven't seen that. Export to. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, that that's another tangent rant. We're, we need to reduce our rants. Reduce our rant. Ranting. Bring it back in. Reel it in, Sean. Reel it in. Rant one one rant. Okay. I think, I think I, I'm stunned. I am stunned. Um, I am going to be going to, and this is important. Let's, let's actually talk about this really quick, everybody. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> For those of you that may not know this, I'm going to put this into 
<laughs> waiting for the large eyebrows to appear for the beef of the week. I've had a couple beefs today, Gareth. I, I don't think I could steal Yulia's and Russell's gig on that. They're funny. They're funny. The beef of the week is good. All right. <clears throat> Anybody using the Adobe Suite, um, the community, uh, community, community.adobe.com is an extremely important place to jump in. And so let's go to our issue is I don't even know is there an Adobe camera raw by the way Sandrine is a community expert she answers questions here We've got the maybe it's a Photoshop the whole Lightroom Lightroom classic preset thing has been annoying me for a while because Adobe keeps sending out emails with Lightroom presets and I can't use them because there's no obvious way to get them into Lightroom classic So, do, 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 do. If you have any issues, problems, questions, um, this is where you would go to put it. I'm all over. God, you got me. My brain is just going. It's going. Um. I've got one preset. We can rename, update with current settings, move to group, export. Wait a minute. Export. Crete sunset. All right, we we're we're knocking this out. We are checking this out now. Hold on. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab any photo at all, hit D for to develop. Now I am looking for Crete Sunset, and there it is. Why in the heck is it there? Why why is that there? I okay. Now I'm interested. Let's get it back into Lightroom. Um, Crete Sunset. I'm going to right click on it and we're gonna export. So I'm hitting export. Jeff, <clears throat> this is for you. Uh, where you're gonna save this as a Crete Sunset test. There's not gonna be any other things. I'm gonna just put it onto my desktop. We're gonna hit export. Let me move this. And it has created an XP, XMP file, okay? So we've got our, we have our Crete Sunset Test. Let's jump over into Photoshop. Into Photoshop, we're Command R to get rid of my rulers. Those annoy me. Uh, we're still a smart object. We're gonna go Filter, Camera Raw Filter. We're gonna go into our presets. We're gonna hit these three dots right there and let's go into import profiles and presets. Okay. Oh, are you freaking serious? Wait a minute. Why, why? Does it not take Okay, I don't know what they're looking for. Let's try this a different way. Um, let's go to manage presets. And okay, I'm, I'm just looking to see if there's a way to figure this out. Wait a minute, I'm doing this the wrong way. Let's go ahead, let's cancel out of this. Let's close that, don't save. We're gonna grab my Crete preset and I'm gonna put it on the Photoshop logo. Now, in the old days, <laughs> anytime that like an action or anything at all that I wanted to load into Photoshop, I would just 
drag and drop it onto the file. Now, this photo, because it's a DNG and I opened it, it came exactly up in camera raw, okay? So I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna hit open. We're gonna get out of this because there's a workflow I am trying to achieve here. We're gonna turn that into a smart object. We're gonna go to filter, camera raw filter, and go to presets again. User presets, where would you go? I'm gonna, we need to test something out. Um, what is this profile and presets? Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> okay, move, manage. So in Do Adobe Camera Raw, you're not allowed to export your presets we can move update rename add to favorites see preset info like this is an xmp file all right so an xmp file should work import presets let's try it again and it's not allowing me to grab it. Okay. I don't want to create. Let's cancel out of that. Mm, let's try. Oh. This just turns them off and on under the management. Management. This has got me irked. Like now I'm wondering where that preset went to. Oh. What is rollover? Oh. <laughs> All right. I am I am I'm trying to figure this out. Let's do something stupid. Okay. I really am upset when the fact I cannot help something that should be taking notes, do something stupid. Hey, you know what? It's worked for me before, Devlin. Like there are times I'm thinking, okay, there is absolutely no way that this should work or doing this should do the correct thing and it actually does it. I'm like, oh my God, that's so dumb. <sighs> oh, Oliver got it to work. We need, we, we need information. Start typing, Oliver. Everybody, here we go. So hopefully, Oliver exported a preset from Lightroom, and now we are trying to bring it into Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. Um, wait, why did why why don't I do this? Lightroom, <clears throat> okay. Export from Lightroom. Save the XMP wherever. 
Then in Lightroom Classic, I was just gonna do that. I opened Lightroom Classic. Click on the plus and import there. Okay, so Lightroom Classic. I exported preset from Lightroom and can only import from the basic Lightroom settings. I can only import it from the basic Lightroom settings at settings. I don't understand what that means, Jeff. Okay, so in Lightroom Classic, so you may have to open Lightroom Classic, Jeff, but that's why I'm doing videos. So um, we're gonna hit the plus button in presets in Lightroom Classic. We're gonna go to import presets. Click on import presets. It's highlighted right there. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna hit import. It unable to import all items must be all items were already imported I renamed it though no it has a different name okay let's let's Get rid of it. You just can't rename the file. The preset name is in the file. Oh, I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I got you. Okay. I'm streaming a lot longer than I expected, but that's okay. <clears throat> we're going to rename this. So we're going to rename it. Uh, actually, can we duplicate it? It doesn't matter. We're going to rename it. Oh my God. Why? <clears throat> We're going to hit enter. We're going to export from Lightroom. Oh my God, why? Onto our desktop. Hit desktop. I, there it is. We're going to jump over into Lightroom Classic. Hey, you know... I will do my file naming the way I want, Oliver. Come on. I had luck importing the Lightroom XMP into Photoshop camera raw filter settings, not, not the presets. Okay, Alessandra, have a good day. So in Lightroom Classic, we're going to go and hit import presets. We're gonna to go to the, oh my God, why? We're going to import it and as you can see right here, it's alphabetical. Oh my God, why? Now, here's the question. Monica, hello? It's been a while, Monica. Good to see you. I don't know how long this is going to take. We're gonna go over to Photoshop. We still have this. We're gonna to go to Filter, Camera Raw. Excuse me, let's go in. I may have to restart Photoshop for them to sync. Let's, let's, let's restart. My mouse is acting up. Uh, okay, 12%, I'm okay. Let's restart. I'm telling you, the, that preference button, I, I understand what you're saying, Oliver, that it's the presets for brushes and filters and things like that, but it should be presets. <clears throat> I mean, it is presets. I, uh, okay. This has been... You are welcome, Jeff. All right. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. It is not there yet. Did yours, Oliver, did yours? Wait. If it did not import 
Let me try something. Let me try... Um... Let me cancel because this might be an issue. Let me grab this. If it's the same name, let's go in. Let's put that there in the Photoshop. Let's open up Camera Raw again. Okay, this is interesting because we know we we know for a fact that Lightroom Classic. Well, let me try something here. Okay, file sync. Pause syncing. Let's go ahead and pause syncing. Resume syncing. Okay. Good. I don't know how long it's going to take for Lightroom Classic and Photoshop to sync, um, but we know it syncs. We know it works. After importing the preset into Lightroom Classic, you need to reload Adobe Camera Raw, possibly the whole of Photoshop, because it needs to read the new file from the disk. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Well, we definitely had a rant today. Wow! But, um... Jesus, I'm almost up to four hours streaming. I was going to end a while ago, like 45 minutes ago. <sighs> All right. So <sighs> Adobe, if you're listening, Lightroom Classic team, Lightroom team, come together, have a beer, have an adult beverage, and, and talk about... Um, having your preset sync. The, the stream was forever, Sean. Not my longest. My longest is like almost six hours. I can't, there was nothing going on that day. And everybody was like, keep streaming. All right. Um, get together, have an adult beverage and get Lightroom Classic and Lightroom to talk. I know you don't like each other. You guys like at, at the Adobe parties, you're each on the either side of the room just staring at each other. You know, the Adobe classic guys. Oh, I hate those young punks. And Lightroom guys are like, uh, those old guys, they just don't know what, what's going on. Get together. Come on, please. Please. <sighs> Oliver, thank you for your help. Jeff, I hope we helped you out. There's going to be a solution, Jeff. So um, I think with Oliver's help, we got it figured out. Uh, hopefully, we can get this get this figured out. Make sure, please, keep me posted, Jeff. If you've got any other questions, let me know. DM me. Um, I can always you know, live stream about it, or we'll talk privately. <sighs>
I'm spent. <laughs> we were all over the place today. We talked about the creative circus. If they're presets you've bought, I'd see if you can re-download the original files. Unless you still have them, it'll make them a lot easier to import into Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. Yeah, hopefully Jeff does. I would think he does, but I don't know. Um, yeah, we talked about the uh, com new community challenge that's coming up, the uh, Creative Circus. We talked about posing. Talked a little bit about painting. We talked about Behance. We talked about presentation of your product, of your projects. If if the in the old format, rather than XMP, that's fine. They just get converted on import. Sean's done so much. I've come back to say thanks again. Not stream what topic? Ugh. Oh, next topic. I don't even know. I'm, I'm trying to think up three different streams right now, Vikram. I've got um, an Adobe Express stream coming up on Facebook. I've got the Adobe Live uh, coming up and I've got my own stream. So I've got a lot to figure out. <clears throat> so, and also a challenge. I started a challenge. That just wasn't wise. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here. This was um, notes, foot comfort, not showing the feet. That's, yep, Devlin, you nailed it. I don't care about your feet. Just want to make sure they're comfortable. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Today was actually a lot of fun. We covered a ton. And I appreciate the fact that you, the community, stick around. You ask questions, um, you take the stream where you want to go. I've got a starting point and an ending point. <laughs> From point A to point Z, I kind of have an idea of where we're going, but the route that I take is completely up to you. And I dig it. I am happy about that. Um, Without you, without your questions, I don't think the stream would be as much fun. I know it wouldn't be as much fun, but seems you are president in this site. If it's the Sean Kozel site, yes, I am. I would say I'm the vice president also. Actually, no, I would have to say I'm more like... <laughs> I'd say I'm the vice president in my own site. <clears throat> Um, Devlin nails it. <laughs> oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Share my screen, Sean. A to Z. We got a starting point and an ending point. No idea how we get there in between. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> okay. So in about an hour, Annika will be live on Adobe Live. Make sure to check that out. Stick around. Um, did you say bye to YouTube and Twitch? I did not. Um, I cite Pix and Zeno, but Zeno came over to Behance. Um, and there's some guy, Vikram. So bye to uh, Twitch and YouTube. Thank you for being here. Thank you for asking questions over there too. Um, I will see you all in chat with Annika. I need about an hour break. And uh, yeah, you guys fired me up today. So stay safe, stay creative, just be nice. I will see you in the streams. I'll be right there with you. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Oliver says I need to lie down. I'm right there with you, Oliver. Not together, though. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just we live way far apart. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I want that tortilla, Vikram.
Bye. <laughs> For real. Real, real.